I gotta say, I was listening. I was listening back to the 2014 year release. Oh, such a good one. And there were. Th- there was stuff from da- there was bullshit in Dark Souls 2 that I'd never mentioned. Oh no! I, no, no, no! no, no. Just no. Ju- We're done. I only alluded to the sex Didn't change. Did you just coffin. say that was a sex change machine? Yeah, I, I only alluded had to the to sex listen change back to that. And I forgot to mention that there is technically a finite number of souls in the game. <laughs> no. Yeah, there is. More. There is. I think about it. Yeah, no. What's close to being in Dark? Will- because enemies can permanently die if you kill them too many times. So it's <laughs> close to being Dark Soul. <laughs> we should have our yearlies license revoked for that yearlies. <laughs> it was great. Oh, that was my favorite yearlies, 2014. We should Could ban I, ourselves from I have to doing say, the yearlies. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say, the, the Clanky's line of that no one has played has been a living <laughs> rent-free in my head for the it past was such week. A cool oh, delivery. And, like, I don't know if we ever mentioned it, um... I did play Alien Isolation with Vic briefly, yeah. like uh, like oh. two weeks ago. How'd it go? Wow. Uh, it went well. I, oh, the game yeah, is yeah. terrible. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, it's fine. We, we, it would we be just, so much better. If it, it's it was. a very slow open. It's a very slow opening, but like we just got to the introduction of the alien, and that's when I had to end it. Well, what a great so Graham and Mick played Alien Isolation video. This will be. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Make a whole just, video. It's pretty good. Just that. Can you? That's no, I'm saying goodness. like, can you make like the video? Like, make this the video, right? And then as soon as Mick says it sucks, it cuts off, and that's the video. <laughs> <laughs> we, have an, we have an end slate, but only for that video. <laughs> only for that video has an end slate. So yeah. that's the, that's, we have to do like the it sucks, and we do the Eric Andre. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we should get started. Yeah. Anyway. Hello and welcome to the yearlies. Oh, shucks. I understood it that time. <laughs> Yay! Again. It's going backwards. You got... I have a good sponsor joke for this one. You want to hear it? <laughs> That's not quite all, folks? No. <laughs> I wish. The 2019 yearlies are brought to you by Porkins Breakable Condoms. The only ones that are sponsored by Peter Melanieu because you can stop! And that did cut out. It, it's oh, even God. better that it cut out. Fuck. You started a family so goddamn hard. <laughs> well, with Porkins, you can. But don't worry, because if that family goes wrong, you always have our previous sponsor, Divorce Papers. <laughs> Thanks. To divorce Thanks, your divorce family. Papers. <laughs> you can start a family. Um, Who wants to go first? Oh yeah, we should probably get into 2019. Um, yeah. We 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 talked about just instead of just like what were we doing that year? It's the year in games. 20 what were we doing in terms of what we were doing in what, video game playing stuff? How do we feel about the games in 2019 as a whole? Yes, thank you. You said it better than I tried. To. I've I've heard very mixed things between this group. I've had two people say 2019 was the only good year for games, and every other year was bad. And two people be like. I don't like 2019. 2019 should die. Who, who I'm, said that I'm paraphrasing. I'm pararaphrasing, but basically, Clanky and Christian don't like 2019, and Mick and Graham do. Well, I'm Wait, this is gonna be a I never, I never, I never said that I did it. Opinions. You can't. You can't. You came to me and you were like, eh, "I don't have a lot." My thing is, is that there are a lot of small games. They're all small yeah. games that I love to death, but they're all, I don't know. I, I, nowadays, I'm usually only playing small games. It takes a very special AAA game for me to want to play it. And the, 2019 was the year when, like, I guess I realized that. This was, for me, the second hardest year to think of games to put for the yearlies. The hardest being, uh, if we eventually get to it, 2000. Um, which, we will. Which which was the most difficult, but this was second most difficult. Um, I, on the other hand, was spoiled for choice. This was your. This was mixed twenty seventeen. Yeah. And test, right? I, I I had I had a lot of games uh, this year too. I um I had enough options, but I realized that all of the things um that I wanted on my list were games I didn't actually play in twenty nineteen. So my list transformed. Uh, as as I went on, I I actually had to knock things off as I realized that oh wait no this came out and this was better. And in the spirit of that, maybe I'll just go into my honorable mentions. If you'd like. So, 
I was very close to putting Kingdom Hearts 3 on here because why wouldn't I put Kingdom Hearts Kingdom 3, 3 on here? And then I'm like, but I don't want to put Kingdom Hearts 3 on here because it would mean that the other three things I have don't get to go on. So I, I bit the bullet. I'm not as hot. I, I like Kingdom Hearts 3 a lot. I'm not as big on it as I was when it first came out because I still think Kingdom Hearts 2 is better. So that's the game I'll probably cover when we get to that year. But um, gameplay-wise, Kingdom Hearts 3 fucking slaps. Um, I also had Ukulele in the Impossible Lair, but <clears throat> since, um, spoiler alert, Celeste won last year, um, I'm like, here's a great 2D platformer that's worse than Celeste. Do you think <laughs> I can sell that to people? And the answer is no. You guys will bully it like you bully every other 2D platformer. And I don't want to hurt Celeste. Ukulele in the Impossible Lair. But basically, it's like the 2D platformer of Breath of the Wild, where you can <laughs> take Taylor, on the... I want to point out. Mean? I want to point out that you say we bully 2D platformers. Two 2D platformers have won already. Yeah. You still bully them. The only reason Shovel Knight won was because Mick was feeling spiteful. Some people, <laughs> some people consider Hollow Knight to be a 2D platformer. I can't decide. Uh, wait, did Whether... Hollow Knight win that year? Hollow, Hollow Knight won 2017. Yeah. Okay, so three. That's not yeah. a plat. That's not a 2D platformer. Some people. It is. Yes, it fucking is. How you is that not a 2D it's platformer? 2D and it's a Metroidvania, platform. and it's a different. It's, it's a different genre. Uh, no, but I mean, it is a 2D platformer. It's, yeah, a, it's, really a going to it's not a traditional 2D platformer. It's it's way more an action combat game. Yes, just I, because it's not traditional doesn't mean it's not a 2D platformer. I, oh, I'm really so fighting. sorry. Why are you so angry? Yes, it is what we're fighting about. Shut up, Jordan. Taylor is wrong, and we need to prove it. <laughs> I am so sorry. Shut up, me. The fuck is that? We've been here for like five minutes. Yes, and then you said Hollow Knight isn't a 2D platformer. It's a 2D game with platforms. What more can you fucking want? Listen, I'm not that. I'm not that motivated. Yeah, true. Okay, I'm not being that. You know, no. But my point is, it is calm a. The, it is... Calm the fuck down. I'm, I'm, I'm calm. I'm calm. You're already Jesus engaged. Christ. Every, I just like don't prime. think it's as like. It's as focused as a platformer, and I feel like it's designed Let's around fight. other elements that if I think, like, 2D platformers, I don't immediately go to Hollow Knight. I, I, I think I, of Hollow Knight as, like, a very gritty action game with really good boss fights and platforming elements. I Just like, I don't think Metroid is a platformer. I would agree with you if it wasn't for some of the late-game areas. I, then I yeah, the late game, no, I know the late-game area has, like, a big platforming thing, but, like... I don't remember a ton of the platforming in Hollow Knight. I remember the bosses. Wow. Uh, okay, that uh, this is gonna be a fun year, at least. Um, oh my god, there's gonna be blood. Blood. Uh, blood. Speaking of blood, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Mm. Um, oh, I love that three. I love that two D platformer. I'm not gonna even talk about Bloodstained Ritual of the Night because <laughs> fuck you, Mech. <laughs> Every game's a two D platformer. <laughs> Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Whoa. Not. My favorite two platform. Let's get a platform. <laughs> cart racer, and Taylor, it's a really what? I'm what? so glad you didn't put that on here because I got so frustrated the last time I played. Um, the or was that the crash one or was that another? It was the crash one. We have, yeah. yep, no, we were all there except for Clanky. Yeah, it wasn't fun. You got very nitro fueled. I did. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, yeah, he got really crash team racing. I did, yeah. Um, I, do, I, I never had that much fun playing a 2D platformer. Yeah, I got really <laughs> ritual of the night. <laughs> Pretty much all the way down the ukulele in the impossible lair route, honestly. Guys. Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> so funny. And, uh, did, has anyone ever told you how funny individually each and every one of you are? Yes. Because you're so funny. People you're so funny! That's why I made this channel. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is actually, like, a really good kart racer. Um, it's not Mario Kart, but holy shit, it's really good. It has a great sense of speed with some really good tracks. And I imagine if Jordan knew how to play it, he would actually have a lot of fun. Um, Ooh. <laughs> Insult the host! Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I need, I, need, I need to take the edge off. Um, I the Somnium file should have been on Graham's bracket, and I'm offended that he didn't put it on his because he listen, knew I wasn't going to put it on mine. But listen. it's a um, it's a great story with bad gameplay. I knew how hard Vasella was going to be. Again, 2018 was a lot of options. Yeah, no, the thing is, you can't really talk about I without talking about the story. Um, which is why, like, there's a game in 2020 that I would that I'm probably not going to put on my bracket because it's 
just you can't talk about it without talking about the story. Um, you can talk about Judgment without talking about the story, which is um, a spinoff of Yakuza, but also hmm. is just a Yakuza game and takes place in the exact same town and also has Yakuza in it. Hmm. And in that sense, it's kind of disappointing. But as a detective game and as a beat em up, as a Yakuza game, it's really good. Um, and I put Uh Oh Bartender on here because everyone else put Uh Oh Bartender on here. I actually haven't played Uh Oh Bartender. <laughs> And the main character and the main character in Judgment shares a voice actor with the Japanese dub for Olaf in Frozen. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. He was also arrested, I believe, either for tax evasion or cocaine use. I can't remember which one. I'm sure, he wasn't arrested for playing Olaf. No, no, no. It was either tax evasion or drug use. I can't remember which one. Mm. So, anyways, I had a lot of 2D platformers on my honorable mentions. And that's okay. In fact, I think right. all of them were 2D platformers. <laughs> okay, what did you have, Christian? <laughs> well, I'll get into my honorable well, since you're passing off the baton to me. I'll get into my honorable mentions in a second. I'm still going to do the year in review thing really quickly um because I want to. Um 2019 was probably the busiest year of my entire life. Um and it was mainly because of two benefactors of that. Two two massive fucking projects that happened in 2019 that both relates to that both relate to games. One of which was <laughs> One of which was Woe Games, uh, which I already already talked about in the previous yearlies. But yeah. in this time period, Woe Games, we actually buckled down and spent an entire month making an actual fucking video game, which you're going to hear about in the every first honorable two D platformer. Um, the first, and it was it was a hell of a time. I still have my hats, my shirts, my everything. We had a con panel. It was fucking crazy. It was awesome. Uh, you had a con panel? Really quick? Yeah, we had a panel, we and people showed up, and it was wild. Um, Jordan, that was really nice can, to do. Can I just say one thing really quick? I hate you off, but I just want to point out that I'm wearing the WoW Games shirt right now. Yeah. Oh, nice. Woo. My WoW Games shirt doesn't fit me anymore, and I'm pissed. I'm wearing a Galaga shirt, and you're all just going to have to trust me. Okay, sounds good. Um, the other game-related thing that I did this year that was very, very busy and involved a lot of work with a high payoff was Cactus Arcade. Which no, I'm we're not talking about Cactus Arcade. All Let's of you go. are familiar with. No. And, well, the Cactus Arcade is important to talk about because, well, one, it was it was great, and I fucking rewatch Cactus Arcade videos, like, weekly, honestly. Yeah, they're fun. Because the amount of fucking, like, the, 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 the it, it, it's such a... Both of these were such amazing passion projects and really helped, like, get me more infatuated with games as a whole just from experiencing them. Um, Cactus Arcade was the reason, the, the main reason, why me and Mick ended up in 2019 playing through Bloodborne, which ended up oh, yeah. being one of my favorite games of all time. Um, <laughs> and was it in your top 75 games of all time? It's Drink! Num- it's actually number 16. Um, on Drink. my top, on my top, uh, on my top 50. It's number 16. Um, and yeah, both of those projects, I remember pulling like fucking 80 hour work weeks because I also had like a, a supermarket job all at the same time as all of this was going on. So I was pulling 60 to 80 hour work weeks at times. And I was like, oh, well, I was modeling and, cups for uh oh bartender. And, and we wonder, fucking mint leave. <laughs> and we wonder why we burned out on catch a circuit. <laughs> yeah. But they were fun to edit though. Oh no! Every everything about Cactus Arcade was just a blast. Yeah. The same with Woe Games. Honestly, it, it was all a blast. Um, I all we I think twenty nineteen was also the year that me Clanky and a bunch of others started Dongan Rampa, um, and it was the year that I started playing Terraria <laughs> with a friend as well. Um, and I ended up you know <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 to yeah. Terra Terraria. Um, I love Terraria. Unrelated, unrelated to video <laughs> games, <laughs> but twenty nineteen was the year that I watched The Office. And I just feel like that was a pivotal yeah. moment of my life. And finally, 2019 was the year that I probably made one of my favorite lists. Um, my uh, top 50 favorite songs list. Um, that was 2019? That was 2019. Um, and it still holds Wait, up. Wait, you made it in 2019, but we shared them before the shit hit the fan. Yeah, we, hit, we shared them before the shit hit the fan. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Honorable mentions. Um... I put Beat Saber on my honorable mentions yeah. because Beat Saber is a lot of fun, but I'm really bad at it. Um, yeah. P- 
People Playground is a game that I that I feel like if I admit that I like it, I'm gonna get sent to a I'm gonna get sent to a fucking CIA CIA interrogation room <laughs> because oh, like because it's a game where you just spawn in like mannequins and you just murder them and that's the whole game. Yeah, it's basically a torture chamber for fun. Yeah, and it's 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 fucked up. But if you go into it with a tongue in cheek attitude, there's there's a surprising amount of fun to be had with um with Murder Simulator. Um, I put in the Jackbox Party Pack 6 because I couldn't think of anything else. Um, yeah. I put in, uh, I put in Dustnet, which is, oh, you know what? Actually, for Dustnet, I wanted to read off the fucking, like, IGDB description for Dustnet. Because the only way I could describe it is by reading that off. Dustnet is the yeah. last remaining DE Dust 2 server. Join an asymmetrical cross-platform deathmatch as a computer, virtual reality, or augmented reality player. I never saw any of that. What I Wait. saw was Dustnet is the last, like, one of the, like, a Counter-Strike. It's a last of a Counter-Strike server. Um, Wait, this isn't that fake horror game, is it? No, it's not a horror game. It's more, if anything, like an interactive museum. Um, and you go around and you basically place your own little sculptures um and you build things and it's like really really neat um and you can like you basically like have an impact because barely anyone fucking plays the game um and no it's just it's just a really neat little thing um i haven't played sekiro shadows die twice which is why it's so far back on my honorable mentions we did it we took a souls game and didn't put it on the bracket oh my god but sekiro we is did it guys sekiro is probably an amazing video game uh, probably. It's, I don't know, Mick. Is it an amazing video game? It probably is. Um, it probably. probably is. And then, uh oh, bartender, I put at the very, very end of my honorable mentions because, as much as I love the fact that I made the game, and as much as I love the fact that it it exists and it's fun, no, it doesn't belong on any yearlies ever. It should never ever go on the yearlies in any capacity. Damn. So yeah. Clanky is crying. I'll I go am. next. Nuh-uh. Right, Clanky's crying, Graham. Let Clanky go. Yeah, yeah, let me cry. Well, I want to make him cry a little bit more. How about that? Yeah, yeah. I'll cry with my mic muted. You you go ahead, Graham. Okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, 319 was, was pretty good. Um, I became president of the D&D club at, per at uh, whatever we went to college. I ran into the ground. Um, no, feels. Uh, that's just. Uh, that's just what we all do. Yeah, we all ran the gloves into the ground. Yeah, uh, we actually didn't, but everyone will tell us we did. Cact Cactus Arcade was a thing. Uh, I had. I probably had the most fun out of anyone because I didn't really have to do any of the work. Well, I, just, I just mad. had. I just had. I just had to make get real tweets. today. Um. I, I just, just had to make sat funny in the tweets. chair and ate popcorn. <laughs> yeah, you just had to make funny tweets and do your hardest not to not to speculate about Endgame five <laughs> months after the movie came out. And you fucking failed. <laughs> By the way, Graham, Jesus doesn't die at the end of the Bible. That's kind of the point. <laughs> and actually, I can't believe I said that because I'm wrong. Graham is the Graham is right. He okay. Well, he doesn't really die at the end of the Bible, um, uh, but he does die. He yeah, yeah that's the whole thing. Just yeah, not yeah. at the end. There's a whole thing about it. Yeah. Um, so, Graham. Uh, so, Taylor. Which of your honorable mentions do you like more? Fire um, Emblem Three Houses or Fire Emblem Three well, Houses? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Before we get, we'll get the honorable mentions, I want to I wanna give a very very quick little shout out because I I was <laughs> on their podcast. I plugged this, so I'll plug there. Then, uh... Go check out uh, my friend Cassie's podcast, uh, Vampire's Piss, uh, where mm. he 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 and his co-host uh, watch uh, Vampire's Kiss starring Nicolas Cage every week for a year. Oh. Um, and but they do they try to like do like funny things with it, like watching at certain speeds or replacing the audio with Morbius. Oh my um, god, no! <laughs> uh, have, have, have have they done it with Dark Side of the Moon yet? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> They're looking for suggestions, but yeah, go check go check it out. Oh, the tech uh, is on it's... the grass. I'm a vampire. Maybe I'm a vampire. link will be in the description. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, for my honorable mentions, uh, Resident Evil Two uh, remake, uh, which was a extremely fun uh 
extremely fun, very well crafted remake of video game. I kind of wish I hadn't watched so many Let's Plays of it, but I kind of already knew everything that came, came through. Um, by, by the way, Graham, yes, that would have qualified as a like remake of 2019. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I know. Uh, AI of Sonic and Files, I love getting bullied by my 12 year old roommate who's much stronger than me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta play this game. <laughs> Uh, it is it is a good game. It is like Kotaro Uchi Koshi is one uh, of the best video game storytellers out there, and I do recommend Fire, everyone play it for the story alone. Fire, Fire Emblem Three Houses we'll get to on the yearlies. Uh, oh, what about Fire, Fire Emblem Three Houses? Three Houses we're going to what get to on the yearlies. Why is it um, twice? <laughs> uh, it's just that good. Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's Pokemon. I liked it. What else can I say? <clears> um... Apex Legends, uh, very fun battle royale. I still play it a lot of times this day with my friend Chris Kirk. Yay! Leave that out. I don't know if he wants his full name out there. Well, hold on. He never mind. Uh, then uh, oh, Art Byron is this really interesting game I just found on Steam. Uh, Christian, I think you would like really like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Joker moment. <laughs> Can I ask you guys a question? How many so of you paid? <laughs> oh, I paid for it. I paid okay. For it. Okay, because I just remember there was like one day where Christian just gave codes away. So I'm just wondering how many people actually paid for it. Oh yeah, I I, I will like for anyone here who doesn't own it yet, I will give you. I well, I feel bad that Graham and Mick had to pay for it, but and you guys no, don't. No. no, everyone in this chat's gonna have to pay for it actually. You know, if you're friends Apparently, with Lin Manuel, the, the it, money went to a good reason. Yeah. If, if you're friends with Lin Manuel Miranda. You get free tickets to Hamilton. If you're friends with Christian, you get a free code for Uh Oh Bartender. Honestly, and I know which Uh-oh one. Bartender is more valuable. Uh Oh Bartender has replay value. <laughs> As if I don't also... watch Hamilton 25 times. Also, think about it this copies of Uh Oh Bartender are a lot rarer than tickets to Hamilton. What do you so... mean they're rarer? There's an <laughs> infinite amount of generated Steam codes. It means it doesn't uh... bleed if you put it on the grill. Um. Not if we delete it from Steam, there isn't. Oh, let's do it. Artificial rarity. <laughs> no, we, we we must be better than that. We have to be better than that. Um, Anyone else think it's odd that Sony decided to release their new console like Google Plus? What? Someone else go, please. <laughs> All right, so 2019. Uh gonna be honest probably one of the worst years of my life <laughs> but it was a great year for self-discovery and a great year to figure out what the fuck i really truly wanted to do on this planet so even mm -hmm. though it kind of sucked it was a very needed year i don't want to get too into it uh, here at the yearlies but uh okay. anyway um Not yeah. yearly at the as, yearly. as far as gaming i believe 2019 is when i replayed mother 3 um, mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, Mother 3 is my favorite game of all time. And uh, let's just say that the replay um, then was very needed. And uh, it's it's a great game that you should give a try. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll talk I about that. played it a couple years back. It's solid. We'll, we're, we'll talk about that in 2006, I believe. But mm. anyway, um, I'll just get right to my uh, honorable mentions. Uh, G uh, Baba is you, we're going to talk about. Gato yes. Robato probably doesn't deserve to be this high in my honorable mentions, but God, I fucking love it so much. Um, you know, Clanky, when I had to uh, decide between... Um, we, we, had a, we, we had this versus Tetris 99, where the, where the push is to get on the bracket, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I could go either way, because I know Clanky's really into this game. It's, yeah, you know, I really like it, um, and I think that it, it it's biggest kryptonite, honestly, and this is, you know, going to be a rare thing coming from me, it's too short. I feel like if it was a little longer, it would have been perfect, but I feel like the appeal of the game is to try to play through it, like, perfectly, to get, like, the perfect achievement, quote-unquote. But either way, uh, the art style's really great. It's a rogue, not a roguelike, what am I trying to think of? It's a, it's a Metroidvania, but like a Metroidvania -like. So it's a 2D I, platformer. <laughs> I, I, yes. Oh, um, oh. I'm but, sorry. Like, did I, you, did, were you conflicted by whether or not it's a 2D platformer? I'm more. I'm more conflicted over the fact if it's a Metroidvania. To be honest, um, it's like, like I said, you don't really backtrack into areas. There's just kind of like a main hub world that you always have to go back to. So, um, I, I would struggle to call it a full blown Metroidvania. But either way, great game. You should give it a try. Luigi's Mansion Three um, <laughs> is a lot better than Luigi's Mansion Two, but unfortunately not good enough to be in my any of my spots. Um, it's a great game, though. I think it fixes a lot of the problems of Luigi's Mansion 2, which we like talked no about. I feel like no one talks about that game anymore. 
It, it was good. I actually got it as a gift from my uh, base studio for after I finished my recital at Crane. Um, so that was really awesome, and I have like a you know fond memory of that and everything. But uh, yeah, no, Luigi's Mansion Three was uh was a solid game. Dicey Dungeons, honestly, I probably should have put this ahead of Luigi's Mansion 3, but either way, uh, Dicey Dungeons is an amazing game. Uh, it's like an RPG roguelike, and I think that's really interesting. I think that, like, um, the enemy design is really, really cool, and it's one of those games that's kind of hard to explain, but it's like an RPG mixed with Yahtzee, essentially, and oh, wow. it really, it's really great. You should give it a try. Um, Super Mario Maker 2, we're going to talk about. Forager, yeah. um, Forager is an excellent game uh, that's about, like, survival and, like, just kind of living on this island and trying to make sure that you're able to like you know stay alive and everything um by like you know planting crops and making sure that like you you know ex you explore and forage basically the land uh the game is so good that i had to stop playing it or else i would do nothing but play forager uh so that's forager uh oh bartender we've talked about at nauseum i wrote the music for uh oh bartender it's uh it's okay it's uh, great <laughs> moving moving on king of retail is a game that i admit is not good but i think it's fun and that's why it's here um, I Wait. made a store called, here's the thing, like, if you look up King of Retail in gameplay, you can see why I'm saying it's not a, like, not a good game by, like, traditional standards. But the thing is, is that, like, when I play the game for, like, ten plus hours, there has to be something there that's making me want to keep playing. Is that a fucking playing. White Castle bag? I, <laughs> what? The, the, is, is that not White Castle? I don't know what you're talking about. I looked up King of Retail, and, like, is that not, like, the White Castle font and bag? <laughs> I don't know if it's the bag, but, I mean, the font is pretty similar. Hang on a minute. That. Wait. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. So, that might... I'm not going to fight you on the font, but... White White Castle has, like, car, like handheld carts? No, they don't. That's why I'm confused. Oh, sorry. If you pull up the Steam page... Okay, on the Steam page... Oh, I totally see. This is definitely White Castle. Let me yeah. see. I gotta look this up now. Um, also, Steam Graham Steam page uh, is, uh, is totally White Castle. Is Graham not a, a White Castle fan? Because he's gone, so. Oh, it is. You're so right. <laughs> yeah. Now I see what you're saying. Oh, should yeah, we no, wait for Graham? I, yeah, I just... I, when, when, you do, when you do a Google image search, like, I'm like, that doesn't look anything like it. But it then you pull... Yeah, it shows you the old logo. That's an old logo. Gotcha, yeah. Taylor, when the you. game was like this was like a meme game you yeah. probably saw like a streamer play this game once on a stream and never again that's yeah. how i found out about it Same. um yeah so like it's it's actually like pretty fun if you can like suspend your disbelief and understand that like these humans do not act like humans like whatsoever um but either way it just looks so <laughs> internet Listen, cafe it's... simulator I'm not I'm not saying it's a good game, but I had fun with it. I don't know if that makes sense, but it, it makes sense to me. Okay. No, that it's, listen, I uh, sure. Why not? It's it's like watching <laughs> it's like watching Troll 2 or the room. Oh you know? Okay. Like it's Wild. not you can understand it's not fundamentally a good movie, but you're having fun watching it, so that in my opinion makes it of value at the very least. Hi, doggy. <laughs> oh hi um, doggy oh hang on you're my favorite customer yeah <laughs> i have a text from mr no, Graham. i love lisa so much he say wi-fi being a bitch hmm. you're telling me pie wi-fi <laughs> i'll i'll be watching this while we wait i am fed up with this world <laughs> Don't I, touch I, me, I motherfucker! Saw this video of my recommended so like Wallace hammering for one hour. Chromic. <laughs> then we'll have cheese. Wednesday dare. <laughs> so like, that's, like, that, that's like Wallace if he was like in a in a post apocalyptic nightmare realm. Like, Wednesday. When the Wallace dare. blows. <laughs> Don't start. Don't start on my forty-fifth favorite movie of all time. Okay. I I, I, I just David turned. Bowie and I'm sad about this movie. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, Christian, the like you've actually like the fact you, you you've sat down and made a list. The thing is, to anyone who doesn't know that, you must sound like a total psychopath. The <laughs> fact that you like have like this, you, like every time you see anything, you like rank it and like. <laughs> It's Look, like, it's my thing. It's my character 40, trait. This is number forty-five. That's my yes. character. I thought that was the neurodivergent one here. It's my, it's my quirky character trait. I'm the ranker. I'm, I'm the one that ranks. 
I know you have most of them on like spreadsheets and stuff, but I like to imagine you have like a tiny notebook that you carry around and flip open the pages just to try a to find which page of lists. On. No, can I just Such say, Clinky, idea. I'm imagining like a Santa Claus style naughty and nice list where it's this long, <laughs> esoteric scroll that rolls down the floor. Everything he has ever seen is on this list. Oh it's like, my god. Hmm. All right, let's. Oh, oh. You see, here at number eight thousand five hundred seventy-three, here's here's the second Allstate commercial I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> so Tetris ninety nine, we're gonna talk about Picto Quest. Uh, it's uh, what the hell is that game called? Um, it's Picross except uh, with RPG mechanics, and I have no idea how else to explain it other than. Holy that. shit, that sounds amazing! I'm looking it up right now. Hold the good. fucking phone. What? Well, I say RPG mechanics. I guess that's not really the case. It's more like you do well on the picto, the pictogram or the nonogram, I believe it's called, and then you do damage to an enemy, but you have to do it fast or not do any make any mistakes, or else the enemy does damage to you. It's yeah, I'm, I'm, it's kind of like Puzzle Quest. It. Um, it's kind of like Puzzle Quest, but with pick cross instead. Yeah, and I have played yeah. Puzzle Quest. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's that not my favorite. Cute. I mean, look, I like Picross. I don't know if I'm going to jump immediately into this. I, uh... Yeah, no, listen, it's it's one of those games where it's like, if you like Picross yeah, or Picross, it's like an interesting take on Picross, but it's it's okay. It's at the bottom of my honorable mentions for a reason. All right, let's let uh, Mick go so we can actually start this bracket. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> cracks fingers. <clears throat> All right, so, in terms of my own, I'm just going to go straight to my honorable mentions. Um... Uh, Anno 1800, one of my favorite, uh, a, one of the best games in one of my favorite franchises. However, it's a city builder. I wasn't gonna, uh, let it be in the bracket and die. Um, not that it necessarily would have died. I just. Well, 15 things are going to. Yeah. No, no, no. No, as in not necessarily. It was, I was concerned. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to put it in because it's immediately going to, uh, it's immediately going to get booted because it's a city builder. Um, hey, I, I, I would, I would have voted for a city builder over some of these things. Yeah, it depends on what it got paired with. It could, at the very least, survive a round. That's possible. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, Total War Three Kingdoms, another Total War game, great game. Uh, it, it, uh, it fucked my mic for almost like a year, and this is the first time I've ever mentioned it because it got fixed, and I didn't want to say anything because I was worried that it would, get, I would, I, I, that my mic would stop working again. How does a game fuck up your mic? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's a whole nother can of worms that we're, we don't have time to unpack. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, uh, don't, uh, uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I really like the game. The game really does not like me. Um, no. It is... Uh, 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 it basically... Um, the, the biggest problem with it is that uh, despite advertising as a stealth game, um, uh, it is incredibly difficult to sneak up on anything and not that rewarding even if you do. Um, and also, the main game mechanic uh, involves um, blocking to the rhythm of your opponent's attacks, and I have fuck all sense of rhythm. Um, you like rhythm games? <laughs> I got rhythm. Uh, I fell asleep in a metronome factory. I haven't been the same since. <laughs> um, and then finally, Apex Legends, a game I played quite a lot of, um, and then stopped playing. Um, yep. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's Apex Legends. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Anyway, yeah. we can start now. All right. Uh, does Jordan have anything to say before? I have an honorable mention. Fucking <laughs> 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 I figured if everybody else put up a bartender as an honorable mention, I probably should. That's why in I put mine on. Yeah. In solidarity. You know, it, it's a great game. It, it It's a game where... where hey, Jordan, what bartend. type of game is that Oh bartender? It's a, a bartending simulator. That's, that's, that's not a fair question, because I don't know what... I don't even know what genre to say a Oh bartender is. It's a puzzle game. What do you it's mean? It's a 2D platform. It's a 2D platform. <laughs> right? just said, like, it has it. one platform. It's an achievement for doing a, doing a flip Look, over the platform. Up until this week, I had no idea that Clanky did the music on it. So imagine what amazing things I'm going to learn next. Did you also it. like write a lot of the uh, the names to Clanky? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, every single randomly generated name I made. Um, yeah, that's what well, I thought, Rather, yeah. like, I made, like, I have a list of, like, it was, yeah, like, no, at I... the time, at the time, it was 400 first names and 400 last names, but I got a little, uh, obsessive and accidentally added, um, over a thousand first and last names to that list. Yeah. Really? Can I just say, like, can I, can I, can I say, like, I know you didn't, like, oh, he, he wrote every single, uh, like, 
Oh, he wrote every single randomly generated name. You mean he was there with, like, a spreadsheet, and every time someone played the game, he would have to, like, cross-reference it and come up with yeah. a new random one? <laughs> but, uh, cl actually, Clicky, I think one of your one of your greater achievements that people don't, uh, don't look at as much when they think of a O-Bartender is the, the voices, um, in the oh, game. Oh, yeah! Because those so, you know how, like, when a... Yeah, you know how like when a bartender or a uh, bartender, you know how like when a uh, like a customer comes in and you hear like that. Bop, boop, boop, bop, boop, 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 boop. I had to like go to like family members and friends and stuff and like ask them to say a couple syllables into a microphone, and I made like hmm. the the tech like the video game speak, so to speak. Cool. There are some rare ones. I think there's one that's just thwomp noises. Uh, I think there's one. There was one where like me and two other friends all leaned into Clanky's mic and all did the noises at the same time. I thought you were going to say that all the voices of all the customers is just clanky going, Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I, I went on a digression. Anyway, anyway, we should probably, unless anybody else has any orders of business, we should probably start the bracketing, right? Mm. Ba -ba, ba -ba, brackets. I'm Thank sorry you. About that. I don't know why I did that. All don't right. ever let me do that again. Taylor, don't fucking do that again. Um, Our first bracket, our first matchup, that is, is Baba is You, which is a Christian pick, versus Bug Fables the Everlasting Sapling, which is a Taylor pick. Let me get the timer ready. Uh, who wants to start, by the way? Well, either me or Christian. What do you want to do, Christian? You want me to go, or do you want to go? I have no preference. Uh, why not? I, I, I've been talking forever. Why not talk more? Taylor will start, and the timer will begin in three, two, one, go. I am ashamed of myself because I forgot Bug Fables was a 2019 game, and after I submitted my entries, I had to go back and kill Kingdom Hearts. Because, holy shit, Bug Fables is awesome. Alright? And I know what you're all thinking. It's Paper Mario, but bugs. But like... <laughs> but like... That's all you need. No. See, first of all, Bug Fables is a very important game. Because it, def it, it, sets, it sets a standard. It says... It says in the indie community, if companies, if first-party companies aren't making the games people actually want to play, then we're going to make them ourselves, and we're going to make them better than the base games. Because, hate to break it to you Thousand Year Door fans, but Bug Fables is leagues better than Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Oh, Holy shit. Oh. I, I, I understand. Listen, I like wow. Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door a lot. I like its combat. I think its level design needs a little bit of work. And Bug Fables not only fixes that problem, but it adds so much more. First of all, the story is really cute. Um, there is a ton of lore in this bug world, believe it or not. Like, if you want to just sit, you can, like, there are, like, expedition logs for multiple sites in the game, and they have, like, full-on text descriptions. There's journals for everything. There's descriptions for everything in the game. There's a uh, there's a bestiary. There's an item dex. There's a there's a lore there's a lore log. It, it, it's a very well crafted world, and I'm not usually all that immersed in lore, but like for the story it's telling and how it relies on its past history of this world to tell it, I actually think it's very cute and it was a little bit better than I actually expected. The combat is Paper Mario. But instead of having, um, instead of having like one party, uh, one party member, you swap out and Mario. You instead get the same three party members, and you get to choose what order they stand in. Kind of like also in Paper Mario, but um, but the damage values um, change considerably, and there's a, there's a layer of strategy to uh, who you let take more damage because I think whoever's in the front gets aggroed more. Um, they're all really fun to play as. Um, Kaboo especially. Um, all three of the characters have their own personalities and their own individual side stories that you're absolutely going to want to do because this game has some of the best side quests I've ever played. It's, it's incredible. Like, honestly, I think the game kind of, like, its best moments are in its side quests. Like, they even, like, tell full-on, like, they like 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 they'll they'll give you base details of each of the main characters, but they'll give you so many more details if you do the side quest, which I don't usually like. I usually think it's up to the main story to tell me what's up with the character, but these side quests lead to new dungeons, new bosses, so many good rewards. 
also this is this is this is interesting i'm going to um um much like what mick said about bioshock infinite i recommend you play bug favor <laughs> on hard because um they give you at the very beginning of the game they give you a badge which you can turn on whenever you want to make the bosses and enemies a little harder but if you make the game a little harder you get more rewards and it's not like such a dramatic increase that you can't pull it off not only does it keep the game balanced but for beating bosses on hard you get better badges which in turn makes hard mode more manageable you get more experience points which means less grinding and you can turn it off whenever you want mm. so there is no there is no reason to be afraid of hard mode and i think it's an excellent utilization which is something i will never say Right. There is no real low point in Bug Fables other than cooking recipes, which was a Paper Mario thing that I didn't like doing then, and I don't like doing it a ton now because there's still somewhat limited inventory space and a lot of back and forth. But I only complain because I set out and 100% this game, and I loved every last minute of it. Holy shit, this game is incredible. Good. We're past the four-minute mark, and I think somebody, some people need to talk about Baba is You. Mm -hmm. I'm sure so, me like you can tag team this one a little bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, sure. uh, let me set my timer. Um, so Baba is You is one of my favorite puzzle games. And not only have I not even finished the game, but I also hate puzzle games. So the fact that Baba is You is able to accomplish so much and so little is mind-blowing to me. It's the kind of game where... If, if, does, is anyone not familiar with Baba is You or how it works? I have no idea what I'm it is. Not. Okay, so Baba is <laughs> basically a game where you assemble sentences, basically. There are objects in the game. It's a lot like programming. There are objects in the game, like there's a block that says Baba, which represents you. There's a block that says Key, which represents the key in the level. And you push these blocks into these sentences where it's like, you can say like, uh, Baba is Key, and then you Baba becomes a Key. And then you can push all you can push like everything about these sentences around and all over the place to form sentences that will get you through the place. Let's say there's a door blocking a pathway, and there's a Baba object and a door object and an is open somewhere around. You just push the door into the is open, and then the door is open, and then you go through the door. And this sounds these are very simple examples. Because the more complicated examples of what they managed to do with this are so outside of the box and so goddamn fucking mind rending that it's 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 crazy. I think uh, it's it's like there are examples where the game wants you to think not just about the sentence structure but about spatial awareness. It makes you think about timing. It makes you think about like all sorts of different things in the game that you wouldn't normally think to do. And the game also allows you to just go fucking ham and create these ridiculous scenarios where like Baba is rock and then every single rock in the level becomes Baba and you have 18 Babas running all over the fucking place and it's fucking great. Clank you, you go. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say like some of the more unique puzzles in this game, like that really show you like how unique this game can be. I'm, I'm, you know, not to like I'm not gonna get into like spoiler territory or anything, but like one of the exa one example like is if sometimes you'll see a puzzle where like it'll be like the flag, which is win, which is what you have to touch, is like surrounded by a wall, and there's no way to be able to go through the wall. So instead, what you have to do, or rather, like there's no door or anything to go through the wall. So if you erase the sentence, or if you get rid of the sentence that says wall is stop then all of a sudden the walls don't stop you and then you can just walk right through the wall to get to the flag and win or sometimes if you want to just make things simpler you can make the puzzles like baba is you and win so that way you be you are baba and you win it's just like it's easily one of the most unique puzzle games i've ever seen in my life and it really deserves so much it deserves like the recognition that in my opinion like that tetris gets you know it's yeah. i just think that it's such a solid puzzle game it has as i've never really played a puzzle game that i've admired as much Ooh. as it it has a really simple 2d art style and really, really chill music that's super fun to vibe to. Um, and I, I, it's got world-based progression where you you go to each level and there's super fucking, super fucking difficult levels that I've spent like two hours on like and, and haven't figured out the answer yet because I, I'm still smashing my head against the wall trying to figure it out. And then there are some puzzles where I actually like, 
I used websites to get hints to figure out how to beat them because you're allowed to do that because you can play video games however you want. And I, by using these websites, I was able to find solutions to problems that were so insane. But when you actually see them in action, you're like, holy shit, that just makes sense. It just makes sense. I would have never, I don't, I don't know if I would have ever figured that out, but it, it makes so much sense. You know, like it, it all clicks. Baba is you just clicks. And cool. that's what's great about it. It's a very hard game to explain, but one of those yeah. where if you see, you instantly understand what's going cool. on. Can I, um, like can I ask you two questions? I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're out of the eight minutes, but if we want to like begin to, I think, I think it's relevant enough that you can do that. You know what we're about. Um, yeah. Have, so neither of you have beaten this game, right? I have not. I, Okay, it's tough to say because, like, I'm very far into the game, but, like, the game allows you to skip, like, levels, you know? So you don't have to play every single level to, to so get that was to gonna be game. That was going to be kind of in the, in the vein of my next question. Is this game player-friendly? Like, I of you course. Have, like, sometimes I, like, you have puzzles that, like, are pretty fucking hard, but the nice thing about it is if you have a puzzle that, like, you just don't get, you can leave the level and go to another level and still finish that world, you know? Yeah, you because don't the... need to beat every level in a world, too. And the game gives you a lot of options for, like, split paths that you can take, so you, you're never locked onto a path. The way Christian pitched this to me once is, like, a game for programmers. But you also I don't hate... need... You don't need to be good at programming to play this game. I mean, take it, from play this. It. Take, take it Take it from me. Uh, I fucking hate programming, and yeah. I love Baba as you. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, like, I like puzzle games, and I like puzzle games built around one idea, and I like so many ass... Like, I like so many ideas behind Baba as you, like having secret, like, harder levels and, like, the world format in general. I'm just wondering if the core puzzle dynamic, core puzzle concept of Baba as you is for me. It's easily one of the best, like I said, it's one of the best puzzle games I ever played. And I, I just, you know, I think you need to give it a chance. I, I, I cared enough when I saw someone review it to not want to see the solutions to the puzzles. So I I definitely care somewhere. I just, I just, um, I don't know. Okay. Um, any last thoughts on this? Anything from any of the people we haven't heard of on these? Graham, Nick? Oh, not played either. Yeah. Neither have I. I got nothing. Yeah, I figured. Um, should we get to the vote? Sure. Okay, we'll so I have, I have to figure out the order. We are going to start with Clanky. You are going to go first. And it's going oh, to go Clanky, Graham, Taylor, Christian, Mick. Okay. Uh, should I start? If you'd like. Uh, okay, um, so despite everything, I think I'm actually still voting, or I'm gonna actually vote for Bug Fables, and the <laughs> only reason I say this is because, uh, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is, uh, in my top five, I don't know if it's still number two, but it's probably, like, up there still, um, and I've heard that Bug Fables, uh, like Taylor said, um, is very much in the vein of the thousand year door and i know that it's one of those games that as soon as i play i'm gonna love it I it's, own the, the, it's the real paper mario 3 i don't yeah 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 all even though super paper mario wasn't that bad but yeah no no but like in terms of like that Gameplay. like the first two yeah yeah so i'm i'm actually getting into bug fables wow okay uh so then next is graham uh so having not played either of these games uh, I think I'm going to give it to Baba is You just because its premise is just so unique and, like, mm. inventive that, like, I feel like I just have to appreciate it more. Okay. Um, that brings us to Taylor. I wanted to think of a clever bug rhyme to vote for Bug Fables, but I didn't, so I vote for Bug Fables. So you just treat that one with a shrug? <sighs> I need to think better. That's okay. We all do. Christian. Literally, despite being the Bugman guy, I'm going to vote for Baba is You. Fuck you! Mm. You, but you traitor! <laughs> you all betrayer. Tied uh, up. Please. All tied up going to Mick. <sighs> okay. 
this is actually a hard one for me because i haven't played either of these games and they both sound really interesting Weirdly, a big part of the reason I'm not going to immediately vote for Baba is you. And actually, I actually genuinely do want to play Bug Fables. It seems really interesting. But there's also part of... Uh, but uh, one of the things is... Uh, uh, but I also really like Baba is you. One of the things holding me back from just saying Baba is you is thinking that... Oh, Taylor's going to be upset with me. <laughs> oh, well, let's just cut. I'm not saying anything! We've been quiet this whole time to let you Listen, have an Nick, unbiased as yeah. much as as much as I want you to vote for Bug Fables, if you're not voting for it because you're afraid Taylor's going to be upset, then I'm a bad person to do the yearlies with. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but I do. That's not the I, main reason. I actually am conflicted. I, I, I will say, and if, if I can press a little, and I won't bash Bob as you because I do have I do have a fair amount of respect for it. Yeah. But I will say, Mick, I hear you go on and on about lore in games and i feel like you could have fun learning the lore of bug fables baba is you have silly puzzle that go wee. <laughs> the puzzles go wee. okay <laughs> i am go you know okay i'm gonna vote for baba is you wee. but it's close it's really close mm -hmm. this was a tough first round it was <laughs> yeah, i just had i just had a thought of yes. which one do i feel like i want i'd, I'd want to play sooner and I think I'd rather give Bob as you a shot. Not that I don't want to give, not that I don't want to give Bug, Bug Fables a shot. It's just that like, I could see like if you said, Mick, I bought you Bug, I bought you Bob as you. Do you want to play tonight? I'd be like, yeah, fuck it. So I'm submitting the score three to two. It's Baba a depressing you. but very respectable vote. Three, yeah. two, one, submit. Honestly, I'm gonna be pretty sad if Bug Fables goes down in losers bracket it round one. Better not. I didn't want to vote against it. Like honestly. I thought yeah. you would vote for yeah. Bug Fables, to be well, honest. This, this but, whole time I thought Bug Fables was a secret sequel to Frog Fractions. <laughs> no, the, the, honestly, the thing about Yeah, Bug honestly, Fables, the fact that Christian is voting against Paper Bug. Mario with bugs is kind of a shock. It's, yeah. it's because when I talked about Baba as you, I got so fucking excited. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it fucking electrified me talking about yeah. that game. I still think if you yeah, this, play Bug this was Fables, not an easy decision to make. Yeah, it was yeah, no. not. And it's, it's they're Baba, both stellar games. And then it's Baba as you against a game that I haven't played. And then, you know, it, it kind yeah, of but boils like, down to that. When has that ever stopped you? I was gonna say, Christian, that's I'm in the same position as you, and I still voted Bug Fables. Yeah, yeah. So it Honestly, really I gotta say, basically things. every single, uh, and every single matchup except for probably the last one, is like, hmm, I'm, you know what? These are hard to, I, I, it's hard to say which one is better. Like they're they're both pretty good. And that's a testament to Mick liking 2019. <laughs> yeah. And like, there's right. some games here that I don't like, but I have a healthy respect for. We don't have the one. Um, nuns in their panties don't know how much hatred I have for this game. What? <laughs> well, I've never heard that What the hell did you just say? Before. I don't know. Just every year we have this analogy in relation to how much Mick hates one game on this bracket. Nuns? <laughs> what is that? What? What was that metaphor? <laughs> just yeah, like, no, no, no. Wait, let's move on. Move on, move on, move on. Okay, the next matchup is Devil May Cry 5, which is a Taylor pick. Versus Tetris 99, which is a Christian pick. Uh, who wants to go first? Can I, Can I make a... Oh, I was going to actually recommend Mick go. I, I, I have something quick to say. Okay. okay. Nuns in their panties don't even know. <laughs> I'll make... Christian can go first. I'm starting at 3, 2, 1, go. I'm not even going to set a timer for this. Tetris 99 is Tetris, panties. but a battle royale. If you love it, you love it. If you don't love it, you don't love it. It's probably not better than Devil May Cry 5, but, like, it's great in its own right. It's unfortunate <sighs> that it got paired like this. That's the thing, yeah. right? We really don't need to talk about Tetris unless... Yeah, no, like, it's like, yeah. it's Tetris, but Battle Royale. But, so like, that doesn't, but that doesn't diminish its quality. Like, here's the deal. Why did I pick Tetris over Gato Roboto? Because in one of them, you can play Tetris. Yeah. That was and it. I just Tetris like 99. Tetris a yeah. lot. By the way, I gotta say, I was actually, like, when I, when I, I'm like, you know, there really is nothing we gotta say about Tetris 99, I was very tempted to say, hey, do you think maybe we could swap, uh, Devil May Cry with, uh, Death Stranding so I can use the time saved by Tetris 99 to talk about Death Stranding, but <laughs> We're I, I no. uh, what's going on, but that would be rigging the bracket, technically, yeah. and also I'm not entirely sure that 
Death Stranding would be Tetris 99. <laughs> wait, what do you mean? Are you? Oh, wait, no, that's my opinion. Okay. People I, I, like Tetris. Okay, I wasn't no, sure. Sorry. Listen, it's con Listen, it's tough. I don't like battle royales, but holy shit, I like Tetris, and I don't care how you present Tetris to me, I will play it. But Devil May Cry 5 is really good, and. You know, I thought about it, like, Devil May Cry was another thing that, like, squeezed its way onto the bracket, because I think Kingdom Hearts 3 has the best gameplay in its series, but I'm like, but if I had to stop and think about it, Devil May Cry 5, the action in that game is just better. It's like, I, like, had to stop and realize that Devil May Cry 5 is probably a better game than Kingdom Hearts 3, and, uh, that's weird. It's, it's weird, because I'm a very new Devil May Cry fan. I think Mick... Has um has has many more years of Devil May Cry on um only on a few, uh, but I have I have a lot of friend like I have a friend whose profile picture has been Virgil for like ever since I met him. Okay, so like I have a even though I haven't been a Devil May Cry fan for as long as some people, like I think my first game was uh, four when four came out. Um, okay, um, <laughs> but like I have a lot of friends who are like really big in the Devil May Cry, and I've naturally gotten into it. As well. Yeah, so. Like, how to how to talk? I also have a friend who thinks DMC is the best one in the series, but he has weird opinions about a lot of things. Well, we're we're, we're putting DMC aside. I um I go very um. Does everyone know what Devil May Cry is? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I love okay. I love Dante's Inferno. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm kind of gonna justify that with a response. I go um mm. I go back and forth between which Devil May Cry I like the most. I go back and forth between three and five. And I think what makes five my favorite is I think it's the most refined combat um, with the best level design. Um, and in and, and older Devil May Cries, you do a lot of like, you'll do missions and the missions will have you go to one location, but then in another mission, you'll do that location, but backwards. Um, but Devil May Cry five has like these very, I mean, if, if, first of all, it has the advantage of just being on a higher, higher piece of hardware, but the, la but the, but the, but the like, just like traversing over like like rooftops in, in Devil May Cry Five is really good. Um, you play as three characters, and um, two of them, two and a half of them, are really really fun to play as. Yes, yeah, um, so actually, that's something I wanted to say. Is that the other great thing about Devil May uh, Devil May Cry is that Devil May Cry Five is it's got a lot of variety because there's three different characters who you can play as, and they all play very differently. Um, and so, for example. I actually don't really like playing as Dante. He's my least favorite character to play as, um, and so, but he's only in like the, he's only in a third of the game. So, you know, I don't have like I, if I, if I had to play as Dante the all, all the way through, I probably wouldn't have liked the game nearly as much. Um, but the fact that I got to play as V and uh, um, Nero, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I think taylor were you act I, I have a feeling actually your fa your least favorite character was probably my favorite character is your favorite character v yes well then yes you are correct <laughs> and and my favorite character is dante so aren't yep, we just all right this tracks this tracks this tracks but but look i don't yeah. dislike playing as v i just think he's the slowest part of the game yeah um, and i don't dislike playing as dante i just it, feel overwhelmed with options as dante. And, I, and i feel like when i'm playing as v i'm almost playing like a real-time strategy game instead of an action game which is weird um yeah. because because like the high the high the greatest thing about devil may cry i think the devil may cry franchise may have the the greatest boss battles in the history of games i i i feel like the combat in devil may cry is so there's so many layers to it, and you don't have to master it, but there are so many ways you can. And like with a character like Dante, who has four different play styles that you can just jump between, none of which are the wrong way to play, but and seven different weapons. Yeah, and the weapons are so crazy. You fucking, fucking. One of your weapons is just like a pair of motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's one motorcycle split in half into so. <laughs> You fucking like get a, you fucking get like a fedora and you can just throw it around. It's a fedora that allows you to shoot crystals out of your arm and also like throw it and like put it on enemies' heads and it's cra it, look it's crazy. So this st also it's very important to note that Devil May Cry Five is super important for its own franchise where like this was the Devil May Cry game people wanted forever. And, like, we weren't sure we were going to get it. 
and people got it and it like it was a love letter to fans of the franchise and it's it's very important to look at it that way because um right because because I think Capcom like did a full on vote where they were like hey which which one of these devil may cries do you want us to focus on do you want us to focus on DMC or do you want us to completely abandon that and do the one you actually all want and um they listened it, it was it, it was it, it pioneered kind of like a Capcom redemption arc as people call it yeah. And uh, it also contain it also the game also contains one of the best features ever, which is supposed to lose fights that you can win, and then the game just ends. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was a feature. The, the, the first the first boss fight of Dero against Yurisen at the beginning of the game, you can win that, and then the game just ends. But this is by the way, this is just Mick and I having a conversation about <laughs> Devil May Cry Five. We're yeah. not really like pitching it to you guys. We have no, seven just, minutes just, just to just talk have. about Devil May Cry because yeah. we only needed what we only needed five seconds to talk about Tetris Ninety Nine, yeah. and then fifty five seconds to justify only talking yeah, about and, and, five and seconds. To be fair, this is a delightful conversation. Yeah. Um, but to just just to give you guys an idea, it's it's high octane action. It's like the pinnacle of an action game, like Bayonetta Two, uh, No More Heroes. Um, it's just an amazing action game, and I think it's like it probably has the most depth of any action game I've played. If I had to stop and think about it, well, story depth or gameplay depth. Um, gameplay game depth. depth, but the story is really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the story. The yeah, the, the the story is fun. There are some absolutely great lines. I mean, the characters are <laughs> like. It, you get to choose from three different flavors of cocky bastard. One of these attacks is I think he just he just reads scripture. Oh, no, he's reading the poetry of William Blake. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah that's, exactly. That's, that's uh, one of his attacks. Um, incidentally, V is the one that looks like Adam Driver. <laughs> and no, no, like I remember when the when they first showed off the character, people were like, is that Kylo Ren? <laughs> Does he have Kylo Ren's big beefy nipples? Is that Kylo Ren in my Devil May Cry? So he is shirtless. Oh, does he have his big beefy nipples, Mick? I don't know, because he's wearing... Well, he's shirtless, but he's wearing, like, a vest, and so his nipples oh, are covered. Oh. Um, no, I think he is naked in one scene. You know what? Be the nips. Oh. Okay, now I'm... Okay. Beefy nips. Beefy so, nips. So to basically sum up, Devil May Cry 5 is like, the, is like the crack cocaine of its franchise. You start with three, you skip one and two, um... You start with three, and you let the and then you play four, and it'll be a little worse than three, and then you'll play five, and it'll feel. This is how Vinny describes it: Devil May Cry Five is crack. It's just crack. Yeah, it's yeah. just crack. Do you guys like crack? <laughs> you guys <laughs> like crack. I like crack almost as much as I like nuns in their panties. That's um. That's <laughs> that, that, let's, let's try that again. Um, maybe nuns cut that out. Panties. Um. <laughs> There's a what lot is of, wrong with you people? There's a, a lot of great sound bites coming out of this, this, my, this session. My Taylor uh, is soundboard it, is going to be Is there complete... anything else? You okay. have a Taylor soundboard? No, of course not, but I, that would be funny if I did. Do you? Uh, does anyone have any questions about Devil May Cry? Does the devil cry? Uh, you have to play and find they out. They may. They may. Oh, Jordan, I didn't just send that so you can see the resemblance. I sent it also because his nipple is... is oh, in... he does have the beefy nipples. <laughs> oh! Let's beefy go. nipples! Uh... This was on, incidentally, like, this is on, like, row three of, like, the Google search, the Google image search oh, results. Great. Beautiful. Not too far. I, yeah, I don't have any, anything to say. I just want to say, like, ever since I listened to Bury the Light, I'm just, like, if, if I listened to that in middle school, I, that would be like, yeah, fuck, you're so awesome. Yeah. Like, it's like, in, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it, yeah, it's it's a little bit, it's a bit like, um, um, uh, it, it, it'd be, it's a bit like what <laughs> I am all of me from Shadow the Hedgehog wants to be. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about the soundtrack. <laughs> But yeah, it's just like Shadow the Hedgehog music, and that's not. The, and I don't mean it's Crush Forty. I mean it's Shadow the Hedgehog music. Yeah. Oh god. But like good Shadow the Hedgehog. Not not, not oh, to it's... say that Shadow the Hedgehog music is bad, but just that like. It's like a game that deserves that edge. Yeah. So yeah, actually, here's a great way of putting it. Devil May Cry has an edge, but it also has a point. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. Is there anything else that needs to be said about either of these games? Because we've gone way over. <laughs> you should have stopped us because this, me and Taylor would have just kept going. Yeah, we're just oh, talking about that on the cross. I'm sorry. I was trying to be a nice guy, but yeah. No, know. we're good. We're going to be fine. We're always going to be fine. A little All scared right. for round six, but we're going to be fine. <laughs> oh, well. Um, <laughs> when we get to listen to, <laughs> to the mix. Round six is a threat. Mick's going to pull out his charts, and then we're fucked. Oh, shit. Jordan, tell people to vote. Otherwise, we're yes, never please vote. Um, Clanky goes first in this round. Uh, I don't give a shit about Devil May Cry, so Tetris 99. Okay. Uh, Graham. Graham. That's a vote for Devil May Cry 5. Just go with it. Go on. <laughs> Wait, no. What? Is it? Is he talking? I don't no. think so, but I know what he's voting for. <laughs> Graham, speak. <laughs> Graham, oh, are you Graham. dead again? Fuck. Graham? I can hear him occasionally peeping in, but... Graham? Hello? Hello. Okay. Hello. Okay. Um, uh, Double May Cry. Yeah. Hmm. Taylor. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, he's back. Double May Cry 5. Double May oh. Cry 5. Okay. Taylor. Oh, sorry. I heard a disconnect. Um, Yeah, Double May Cry 5. Okay. Christian. Double May Cry 5. Mick. Don't make five. Damn. <laughs> Clanky, I'm learning that you really hate action games. I I don't hate action games. I just wish more action games were good. That's... Ooh. You hate action games, man. That's... No, I just... I, I like... Uh, what is that game? God of War? God of War is great. PS2 God of War. Love that game. I feel sorry. Clanky <laughs> hasn't played a video game since since 2007. I mean, I, he think, I, I, I generally think Tetris 99 is a game from 1999, so that works. Damn, that would actually be like a great name scheme if they had the idea that early. They should have waited till 2099 to release the game. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, the next round. Uh... <laughs> you know, we, we, say, we say somewhat often that we can't imagine two more different games. <laughs> well, we have... Untitled Goose Game, which is a clanky pick, versus Control, which is a Mick pick. Uh, who wants to go first in this round? Would I? Sure. Yeah. Three, right. two, one. <laughs> it's very. That was funny. It's very <laughs> rare for a um, for a comedy game to be uh, good. I don't know if you guys have it's seen the trailers. Real. Listen, I'm, I'm, let me speak. Let me speak. I feel like a lot of the time comedy games thrive on the fact of, like, people, you know, talking and telling, like, you know, stories throughout the gameplay and everything. I think a perfect example is that game that we're seeing trailers for, the Justin Roiland game. Have any of you guys seen that? Oh, don't even um, get me started. Okay. Yeah. I know who Justin Roiland is. You're, you're, uh, he's, he's, the creator, he's the creator of Rick and Morty. He made that game where it's, like, the gun talks to you and there's a knife that talks to you. And, like, there was a clip on Twitter going around for a while where it's like, I don't think we should shoot a kid. And and uh, like that, that was like the whole game, and everyone was kind of dunking on it. Um, I, have I feel no like what that's... you're talking about, but whatever. Okay, uh, just know it's a, a little studio cringe. called Squanch Games. Can I just say yeah. that does sound unfunny? So let's just move on. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of comedy games, unfortunately, fall into that category, or with age, will eventually fall into that category. And I'm not talking about games that have funny elements like Portal 2, or you know, I guess Borderlands. But like, I I'm talking more about the games that try nothing but to be funny, like Goat Simulator. You know, a game that's kind of meant to be like a stream bait kind of game. And I feel like Untitled Goose Game is the only game a la Goat Simulator or like King of Retail even that's like actually successful in the fact that it's funny while also being a fun game. Um, I think that the puzzles that you have to solve in Untitled Goose Game are very unique and interesting. Um, <laughs> the game is very short. I'm not going to deny that. And that, I guess, kind of works to its detriment. I think it's the perfect length, but I can see why others would argue against that. Um, but I think that Untitled Goose Game is very charming, and that's what makes it, I guess, like, work. Where something like, Unti uh, like, I, I keep comparing it to Goat Simulator, because I feel like the comparison's very apt. But Animals. in Goat Simulator, yeah, yeah. In Goat Simulator, you're kind of, I, I guess, like, 
there, there's it's kind of directionless from what I remember. They might have updated it and added like quests or whatever. But from what oh, I remember did. of the game, yeah. I mean, I just I, I think that Goat Simulator relies too much on like the silliness of it. But it's not against Goat Simulator, so I'm gonna stop talking about it. Um, but Untitled Goose Game, I just think you know plays <laughs> with the comedy aspect that it's going for very well. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's in my opinion the perfect length. And the puzzles are things that like you actually have to rack your brain like around to to, to solve. Yeah. It's not like it's not Baba is you level of like complicated or anything Baba is but goose. literally but like it's it's i don't know i think untitled goose game is probably one of the most unique games i've ever played and mm. i i think that um yeah i just think that it works really well as a as a funny comedy game much better than like other games that try to do that and in my opinion don't do it very well if I can briefly add on top of that, um, one of the things I think that makes Untitled Goose Game so great is that they basically drop you into this world where the majority of things in the world are interactable in some way, and they say, you're the villain. You, you're, like, you, yeah. you're the bad guy. Go, yeah. go make everyone miserable. And, like, yeah. that's just great. That's just, like, it... Because I, I, I love watching people play untitled goose game for the first i time. love watching people suffer but, but look I <laughs> don't put, we all i put people playground in my honorable mentions of course i love watching <laughs> people suffer but i i had on watching people play untitled goose game for the first time is like it's it's so mesmerizing watching people's like sadistic monsters come out as they drag it all of the farmer's things into the lake <laughs> and, and anytime he tries right in the lake Rake in the lake. <laughs> Anytime he tries to get any of his stuff back, you steal his keys. <laughs> <laughs> and you can lock him out of his farm. It's, like, fantastic. It's just, <laughs> like, the the humor comes from the fact, like Christian said, that you're basically, like, the villain of this world, and you feel no remorse because you're a fucking goose, and geese are the worst. So it really works in, in that, like, in its That way. is true. Geese suck. Yeah. But when you when you are the goose, dude, it fucking changes everything. You understand why they do what they do when you're in their shoes. Exactly. Okay, um, I, I'm done. Just one thing okay. before Mick goes into control. Um, yeah. A, I think Untitled Goose Game is a lazy title. Oh, little, you think? But... I think that's the point. I, think it's I don't supposed think to be so, but I don't think it adds to the comedy. I think they should have just called it Goose Game. Honest to God, it's a very untitled stupid, makes it a little funnier. It's a nitpicky <laughs> thing. I just think it should be called Goose Game. Whatever. Um, I want to hear about Control because I'm actually going to okay. play Control. Yeah, control very soon. because we only I have like this, three or so minutes. I said this to Mick beforehand. <laughs> I'm probably going to play Control no matter what. Mick's only goal today is to make sure I don't walk away hating it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to try to do my best to sum up the game as quickly as possible. Um, so, um, Control is uh, probably is everyone's favorite Alan Wake spinoff. Um, oh, yes. oh, this is the Alan Wake spinoff? Yes, Control is an Alan Wake spinoff. Wait, are In you fact, lying? No, there's an entire section of the game that's just about Alan Wake. Well, I said don't make me hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. So we're all for one. Oh god. Okay. Um. Anyway. Um. Just do a quick sub. Wait. It, is this a horror game? No. Okay. It's got some like minor horror elements, but not really. Um. Um. So it is basically Control is a game mo uh, primarily inspired by SCP. Um. It is SCP the video game basically. Wait, the horror uh, game? No, not the horror, not, not SCP the game, as in the website. Oh, what is that? Where it's a collection of, you know, hey, let me, here, I'm just gonna, here's a quick, brief, synop like, premise and synopsis. Not synopsis of the story, just of the premise. Um, so, um, the main character is a uh, young woman named Jessie Faden. Um, on the trail of her brother Dylan, who, following a paranormal event 17 years prior, was taken by shadowy government agents, Jessie is then led by the mysterious entity in her head to the oldest house, an impossibly large, brutalist skyscraper in the heart of New York City that can only be found if you know where to look, and it is the headquarters of the Federal Bureau of Control, the agency responsible for investigating and controlling supernatural incidents in the U.S. Unfortunately for her, she enters the oldest house during an emergency lockdown following a containment breach of an alien intelligence called the Hiss, which has possessed nearly everyone in the facility. And even more unfortunately for her, 
the board, an upside-down intelligent black pyramid from the astral plane that communicates through poorly translated subtitles, appoints Jessie as the new director of the FBC, gives her a gun, and tasks her with reclaiming the building and recontaining the hiss. God as for damn. the actual game, uh, as for the actual game, uh, like in terms of gameplay, um, it is a third-person shooter um, that mixes in. Um, but throughout the game, you will um, you will gain various powers, such as the ability to um, uh, use telekinesis to lift objects with your mind and then fling them at enemies. Um, uh, you gain the ability to uh, what's going on? Um, uh, possess enemies, levitate. There's a lot of very fun powers you can use in the game, um, in addition to having a a gun which can like transform into a bunch of different forms. Like it can be a pistol, a shotgun, um, a sniper, uh, a grenade launcher, all of these things. But it's like this it's like this weird gun made of like floating black cubes. It's wild. Um, um, the games uh, the games the, like the layout of the game is totally different than I was expecting. Um, like I kind of expected that it was going to be a rather linear experience. Um, the level, and I'm almost upset that we, that, 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 that this turned into a joke earlier, because I genuinely mean this, that it's almost kind of a 3D Metroidvania, um, in okay. the sense that, like, the levels have that sort of looping nature, where they're constantly turning back on each other, um, and, uh, there's always a reason to, like, go back through an area that you were at before, because you've gotten a new thing that allows you to pass through this area now, um, like, there'll be areas in the beginning, like, there'll be areas in the beginning of the game that you can't access because you don't have something. Then you'll gain that thing later and be able to return and actually go through those areas. You know, that sort of thing. So, um, so you would say, and I'm just asking because I want to get the information correct. So you would say that by the end of the experience, you are far stronger than you were at the beginning? Oh, 100%, yes. There's a good sense of upgrading yourself? Oh, yeah, definitely. It, like, the, the, the powers are, and, and especially um, the powers are spread out uh, somewhat evenly across the game. So, like, levitation is something you actually get relatively, like, midway through. Um, so, like, you know, there's a bunch of things that are somewhat closed off to you at the beginning because you don't have the ability to fly. Um, but okay, so it's not that. just as a combat uh, device. It can no, also not be at all. used. Yeah, and you, you, get to, you get this dash ability as well that you can actually use to bootleg some of the puzzles that you're meant to levitate for. Um, if you're willing to... You can also... <laughs> I actually got surprisingly far... Uh, even before getting the levitation ability, because I like it, it, it let me bootleg some of the puzzles by using the lifting objects ability to create platforms when I wasn't supposed to, and like climb on top of them. Speed run control, do it. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. It's actually a really difficult game to sequence break. Um, like it, even if you get to a place you weren't really supposed to be into, uh, they're like you know they're like closed doors that you need special keys to get into. Anyway, not important. It rewards you for exploration as, you know, there's a bunch of hidden areas, and some some areas are, like, unreasonably well hidden, where it's like, oh, up there. You know, like, oh, this one is, like, between, like, you have to, like, crawl, uh, like, up into the ceiling, which you think is a light, is actually an empty space you can crawl in there, and there, there'll be, like, a small little chest, and, you know, just small... It's not... It's not. It, it, it won't, it's not going to be. It's not going to reward you with must, and it's not like you have to find these things. But it definitely rewards you for exploring every nook and cranny of the level. Again, to your point, Taylor, like it takes its inspiration from a lot of things which are horror. But the game itself, like, there's no, there's no jump scares. There, like the the main enemies are like people who have been possessed by this like, uh, this like um creature called the hiss and so they basically just look like people that glow red but otherwise they just look like they just look normal um okay. so like yeah there's, there's there's no like jump scares or anything and in fact the game is actually the game is really funny in a lot of places it has this sort of like very it has a sense of humor yeah it's got a sort of um dr darling yes okay yeah so scattered around scattered around the uh level you'll find these videotapes and incidentally something about remedy um, the company, the game developer, they're basically the only people still doing FMV, uh, full motion video sections in games oh, today, no. and they are masters at it. Oh, there's but the, through... are the television things in Alan Wake for those FMVs? Yes, those were FMVs. Yeah, they're um, so they're so good. They're so yeah, good. but in so in in throughout, there's uh, there's things like that throughout Control, and also in Control, you'll find these recordings by the head scientist of the FBC, um, uh, who is. His name is Dr. Casper Darling, and um, 
have any of you seen the movie um robin hood men in tights yes no. um he That's, is pl- yeah. doc dr darling is played by matthew peretta who plays will scarlet in that movie huh. he steals the show every scene he's in he's hilarious um um and you know the game manages it's sort of like you know sort of off kilter sense of humor like there's a fridge that kills people and there's this guy philip <laughs> who was left on fridge duty for the past three days uh... and no one came to relieve him yet and he is dying um because he has to watch a fridge for he had to watch a fridge for three days straight or else it would kill him it's that sort of stuff um evil evil lawn flamingo um <laughs> <laughs> yeah one um... of the boss is a lawn flamingo We've we've gone way over, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um. Any other questions, concerns, comments on any um, of these? How similar is the co- like you you mentioned the combat sort of like a third person shooter against these red, misted, enemies with uh yeah. and you and mentioned a few add ons sort of like with the telekinetic powers uh would you yeah. say that the shooting combat itself like the basic combat loop is similar at all to Alan Wake? Um. No. In the sense that some enemies have shields, yes, but otherwise, no. Okay. Well, rather, rather, Remedy has certainly, they have, this isn't a horror game, and so they're not trying to make you feel desperate and scared. Yeah. So the shoot, like, it, 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 it certainly, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun to play. Like, I would never consider the combat in Alan Lake to necessarily be fun, in the same way that I consider the, the, uh, gameplay in Control to be fun. That's, yeah, that's, that's. Okay, I just wanted that comparison. In. Like, you have a bunch of powers. Like, you're killing enemies left and right, you know. Um, like, you're very, like, there's only, it's very rarely that you'll find yourself panicking and running for and running for health or anything like that. Also, interesting quirk of the game, health doesn't regenerate, but ammo does. It's kind of weird. Hmm. Hmm. Like, it actually makes for a better game because, yeah. you know, if you run out of ammo, it's like, well, I guess I'll die now. Um, that is really weird. <laughs> like, yeah. it makes sense in context of the game, like, why this happens. And it's weird because even though it doesn't make any realistic sense, it just makes for better gameplay. It's it's kind of odd, and I wish more games did it, but I understand why they don't because it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's not like annoyingly difficult, is it? No, no, not really. Uh, um, at least I don't think so. Um, to be clear, I think Uncharted is annoyingly difficult if you don't play on easy. I've not, I've not, I've not played Uncharted. I, I don't, I, I don't remember Control has difficulty modes. Um, but even then, like, if you choose the correct upgrade paths, you can, like, one-shot enemies with the, right. with the telekinetic abilities. Right. There's one boss, it's a giant, it's a giant... No, no, I don't want to know any, I don't know, okay. I don't want to know any more bosses. There's one boss that gave me a lot of trouble, but, uh, other, but it was the only thing that, like, really frustrated me in the game. Anyway. All right. All right. Can we please vote now, because we've yes, gone sorry. an hour on this. Uh, Clanky. Untitled Goose Game. Of course. Um, Graham. I really love both of these games. I just played Control a bit more, so I have to give it to Control. Okay. It's not hard to play Control a bit more. <laughs> Taylor. Mixed Pitch was like a roller coaster because, like, it started out as like this is Alan Wake and SCP, so, uh, SCP. So I was like low. Then he told me it was a two D platformer, and I went <laughs> right up. Um, then he told me um, he told me something I didn't like, and then he told me about the flamingo. So I went back up. Um, so I'm at an up right now. I, I like I like control. I'm excited to play control. Okay. Uh, Christian. Uh, I love both of these games, and I really would be happy with either of them winning. Um, but judging a game that I have played against one that I haven't, I have to go slightly just by a hair. Can I say, or before you vote, Untitled Goose Game is really fucking short, right? Okay, but it's still good. All right, Christian, vote. I... <laughs> I don't know why you needed to throw unnecessary shade at Untitled Goose Game when I was going to vote for Control. Like, I, like that was completely, completely uncalled for. I just forgot that, that I there. wanted to I Nowhere forgot that I wanted to say that. in 20 minutes we talked about both these fucking games because you get it in there. Completely uncalled for. I just forgot that I wanted to bring that up. Oh, we, you had no time to. Um, <laughs> Mick for posterity. Control. Okay. Wow. Four to one, right? Yeah. I have nothing against the Untitled Goose Game, by the way. I just haven't played it. We've had a lot of votes so far where it's just Clanky. I'm sorry. Yeah, it happens. Well, clanky, it happens I, sometimes. I, we've had, I, uh, Jordan, I think, we've had two. I, but to be honest, had I think this is probably lot, going to be the worst yearlies for my games. Oh. 2019, <laughs> Clanky alone. 
<laughs> That's a title. So, well, I think um, actually I'm alone on this upcoming one, so we'll, we'll see okay. how I do. So this one coming up is Katana Zero, which is a Christian pick versus Disco Elysium. Which is a Graham pick. Who wants can to I, go first? Can I go first? I haven't really had anything to talk about this whole time so far. Mm -hmm. Yes, Graham. Of course, you can go first. Uh, the t timer is starting now. So I have not played Planescape Torment. However, uh, for those of you also for those of you who don't know, Planescape Torment is usually regarded as like the pinnacle of the CRPG uh, genre. However, I have been told. Old, I have played Disco Elysium, and I have been told that it's basically a better uh, Planescape Torment. What, you haven't played Disco Elysium? I have played Disco Elysium. Okay. I, I have played through yeah, Disco Elysium. Too, Disco, Elysium. Um, Disco Elysium is uh, an RPG. It is a CRPG without any combat in it. Uh -huh. There is no, there is no combat. There, there are no... The, there are situations that have to be resolved with violence, but it's all, all done through, like, the same uh, ways that you go through, like, any conversation. Um, yep. The game is set in this weird sort of pseudo... It, it's based on, like, our real world, except certain things are just wildly different. Like, it has its own... Uh, it's ha it has its own uh, history and, and conflicts. Uh, yeah, there's... And... Can I just add, and I'll yeah, let yeah. you maintain the pitch, Graham, yeah, but I just yeah, want to yeah. say in regards to this, what's interesting about Disco Elysium is it has this it has this hugely fascinating world with a ton of lore, but it doesn't rely on its lore to tell its story. It smartly uses its lore as background dressing where you can pursue as much information about how the world is as you want. And I think that's to the game's credit because the game is very intelligent already and you could get very lost in the details. So I very much appreciate that a lot of the deep, finer details of the game's lore are actually hidden behind characters and skill checks. So the game is set, you are in a, uh, a struggling port town named Revishal, which is in the middle of a uh, dispute between the dock workers and like the dock owners. Uh, and during that dispute, someone finds a hanged body. Mm -hmm. And you are the detective sent in to investigate what happened with that body. To, because if something doesn't, something isn't solved about this dead body, this powder keg of time is going to go off. There's just one problem, though. You don't even know who the fuck you are. <laughs> yep. Not because, like, you were poisoned by, like, a secret uh, ne'er-do-well. Uh, well, technically you were, except that ne'er do well was you, because you've just been on a bender for like the past three days, so you don't even know your full name or how your body works. Um, it may even be John Marston. <laughs> you may. It um, may be John Marston. I, I said before there there's only like technically one party member of the game. That's your partner, who's like this very straight laced by the books uh, uh, kind of guy. However, gets in a, in a weird sort of way. All of your stats in the game are also kind of your party members. And when I say stats, like I'm not talking about the usual strength, dexterity, wisdom, like the usual RPG uh, stat mechanics. No, this is stats like uh, how quick can you do math? How quick, uh, how, like, what do you think think of yourself? And like, I, there's a lot of them. If so I'm gonna or forget there's a lot of them. There's drama for like mm -hmm. lie detecting. There, there's how imaginative you are, and all of these stats. Well, as you're talking, based on like whether or not you pass certain skill checks, will like add little bits of like narration, like you know, like telling it. And it, it's you can also have a stat get too high to the point where it's causing problems for you. Yeah, it talks to you all yeah. too much. Like, if you get your drug stat up, it's like, hey, we should go smoke cigarettes. <laughs> and then um, you get a side quest to go smoke cigarettes. So, yeah, a large part of this game is this murder mystery, but also you kind of finding out more about yourself, and, and there's this great... There's this great moment that comes in, like, uh, a few days into the game. The game also, like, runs, like... Like, you have a certain amount of time, like, each day, certain things will only happen at certain times. So it's a great thing to have the third day where you're just sitting with your partner, realizing just how fucked up you really are, and mm. 
you come to the realization that you're probably not there's no going back for you you're just a fucked up man now uh and you can and then you could become a hobo cop or in your mind become hobo cop and what that means uh this is such a unique game that like I can't really describe in detail uh, just what it how much it is it is beautifully written uh, the final cut has um, so much great voice acting like almost everything is voice acted uh, the the narrator which is basically your internal thoughts is like this uh, narrated by like I think he's like a blues singer just absolutely like he kills honey, honey dripped voice it's amazing mm, wow. you should go smoke some cigarettes hey um not to alarm anyone but we have like two and a half minutes left and we haven't even touched yes christian go um, i'm gonna give one. myself three and a half minutes actually for this yeah um so yeah. uh <clears throat> to say that katana zero is a ride would be an understatement when i played katana zero for the first time the only game that i could really compare it to in any respect was like super meat boy and that's despite the fact that katana zero is not a platformer it is more of like this 2d action game where you are dropped <laughs> in these oh <laughs> is it <laughs> a 2d action game <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh. Otherwise known as a fascinating right? a platform. Please go on. So Katana Zero is a 2D platformer where you go through and into these little bite-sized rooms, and you have a bunch of enemies in, in each room, and you're told to kill every single enemy, and that's your goal. And you are thrown into all these different situations to. Um, use your sword. Your sword kills enemies in one hit, so it's a really high kinetic, like, go kill this enemy, jump over here, do this, do that. You can set off traps in rooms. You can slow down time to, like, deflect bullets back to enemies. You can pick up objects and throw objects. You can pick up a bottle and throw a bottle at a door and then pick up a knife and throw the knife through the door you just opened into the enemy in the other room, and then you can deflect the bullet that was just shot at you back into the other guy, and then it's oh, already shit. gone. It's already gone. You can... <laughs> you can it has, you can dodge roll like in Dark Souls. There's so many options available to you. And then when you're done with the room, the game will stop. It'll be like, that's enough. And then it'll replay everything you just did for you. And you can watch without any of the time stops. Because, you know, you time stop to set off traps or stop bullets or help yourself. Replays everything super hot style without any of the time stops. Um, and you get to see just how badass you just looked pulling off everything you just did. Um... Katana Zero is so, it's so, it's like going on a horrific drug trip. Like, you, the concept of time in Katana Zero in regards to its plot, which is a very complex plot, by the way, with like three different pads all converging into each other, um, and characters who are just like, who are just, I, I can't really express other than they're just a joy to have around and punch me in the face over and over again. Like, it's great. Um, like three different branching paths or like three storylines? Three different factions of people all wanting different things, all converging okay. into each other. And even the concept of time is melting <clears throat> in your fingers as you don't even know where you are or what you're doing. Like, gameplay sections will start from like in places where you think you're safe. Like, you think a cutscene's about to happen and then suddenly you're in another gameplay section. It's like, what the fuck? Why am I playing the game here? The gameplay switches up all the time by mysterious people who tell you to do certain things like oh no don't kill anyone in the stage but wait you can kill as many people as you want in the stage because fuck you the game won't stop you from doing that so you know it's like your actions have consequences but there are multiple ways the games can go so you know you can basically play the game however you want to play you can be super obedient to these strange masters that you're following or you could to do your own path and just completely disregard anything anyone ever says to you and it's like there there's so much weird shit in this game this game oozes style all of the music is like vaporwave cassette tracks Ooh. that are just like oh it's music to my ears and the style of the game is it's it has a wonderful sense of humor and it's going up against disco elysium yeah <laughs> so why don't we just vote Okay. And get this over with. Yeah, save some time that we've already need to make up anyway. Um, we'll be fine. Uh, I don't know. Clanky. 
Um, I looked up both of these games because I've never... I, I mean, I've probably heard of them, but I've never played any of them. Um, and Disco Elysium has no discos? What the fuck is that about? That's not true. Katana I did Zero not see does. a single disco. Katana Zero does have a disco. I mean, Disco Elysium is more about the concept of disco. I see. But would you rather right. have the concept of a disco right. or the actual I know, I know what I'm voting for. Right. I know what I'm voting for. Sorry, it was just a stupid joke. I'm voting for Katana Zero. Yay. Okay, cool. Graham. Disco Elysium. Okay, Taylor. Can Mick go before me? Um, I guess it would go okay. me, Mick, then Taylor? I'm torn, actually. I don't know if I want to vote for Katana Zero yeah, or that's Disco cool. Elysium. Because um, my thing is, I wanted to talk about Disco Elysium more, but I'm trying to be respectful of the time. But if I think Disco Elysium is going to lose, I need to talk about it more. Can talk I... about it a little bit more, try and convince me. All right, look. Wait, sorry. Um, can I go before all of you? Because I already know what I'm voting for. Okay, sure. Tom is here. Okay. All right. So here's the deal, Nick. Um, one of the great things about Disco Elysium is, as Graham said, there are 24 different character attributes, which are all voices in your head that talk to you. But the amazing thing about this game is, we talk about how in other games, like, there's no wrong, there's no wrong choice. But in Disco Elysium, because there's no combat, there really is. You can ignore a stat entirely. You can even ignore your health, because if you do take story health, you have an opportunity to heal yourself. So you can have any stat at one, and you will be able to play the game completely fine. You uh, do not need to favor one stat over the other and it is to the role play it is to role playing extent because if you have certain stats up and others down, completely different narrative choices will open up and others will be blocked out. If you put more stats into endurance and like strength based skills, you get the option to punch a kid. You don't get that option if you don't put those stats in. So as a kid that deserves to be punched. Yeah. And at the beginning of the game, when you meet now, your that's partner... that's a title. A kid that deserves to be punched. <laughs> his name is Kuno. Um, Kuno? What the you fuck? You want to get fucked? Yeah, and he just, yeah, and he's like a pimp. He's like, who the fuck does Kuno care? He doesn't care. Um, and you can, like, steal drugs for him. Um, so at the beginning of the game, you meet your partner, and he's like, all right, listen, there's a dead body. We need to go discover it. And, you're, and, and, and one of the immediate first things you can say is, are we sure there's there's not more to this? Are we sure there's not some dark, sexy twist? And Kim is like, there's no dark, sexy twist. And throughout the whole game, you have the opportunity to pass a skill check to convince your partner that there is a dark, sexy twist in the case. Oh, my God. Uh, also, okay. well, can, can I say... Can can I say? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't get to say anything. Can, one second, one second. You can also have a character build a Disco Elysium. I'm voting two... for Disco Elysium. We're moving on. No, no, no. I, okay, I, I just want to say... Graham, shut thing. up. We're moving on. <laughs> We're moving on. No one else gets to talk. And Taylor's sorry, voting Christian. for Disco Elysium. I just needed Elysium. to make a decision. Yeah, that's okay. I don't forgive you. Um, All right. Let's go here. Good. So we have... The next bracket, we have... Fire Emblem Three Houses, um, which was a Taylor pick, even though Graham put it on his list twice, <laughs> versus, ironically, a Graham pick, Star Wars Jedi Knight Follow an Order. Uh, who wants yep. to go first? This is going to be a hard sell. Oh, yes, it will. It's not a... It, I didn't hear a name of who wants to go first. Well, no one's speaking, so I'll, I'll go. Okay, go three, Jedi? two, one, go. I'm not going to... This is, this is hard, right? Because there are a ton of Star Wars fans, and I'm pretty sure at least two people here hate Fire Emblem. Um, <laughs> I don't hate Fire Emblem. Uh, okay, I mean... People? I don't know. Clanky, didn't you say you don't like Fire Emblem? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what I did. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and Christian also doesn't have a lot of interest in Fire Emblem. So is, this is a hard sell, because I already know most of you guys like Star Wars. I don't really care about Star Wars, so this is very easy for oh, me anyways. Boy. But, like, it, listen, it's difficult, right? Because Fire Emblem is an amazing strategy game franchise that I haven't really had a ton of opportunities to talk about in this bracket. And, it, you know, rather than pitch the game, you guys know what Fire Emblem is. And this is just an example of a Fire Emblem game that is exuding with content and has an incredible layer of depth and strategy Um between its four story campaigns i put over 200 hours into this game because there are there are three main campaigns and one bonus campaign and i thought i was just gonna just play one campaign and stop 
And then every month I would come back and do another 70 hours. And I don't usually do that. I usually like, when a game is that long, I play it once and I move on because I, you know, the only thing that's really different about each, each mode is its story. A lot of the maps are the same, um, but the characters are different and the characters are really good. It's, the, the fact of the matter is, this is a great strategy game and it is a great Fire Emblem game. But if you guys are not sold on Fire Emblem and you are not sold on strategy games, then I'm, then I don't know what to tell you. And and I know I know I'm I know I'm coming out a little a little pessimistic here because I fucking adore Three Houses. In fact, like I was very sour on Fire Emblem for a little while because I played I got burned out when I played the Fates games, which is another set of three games. Um, but it's way more shipping simulator um, than Three Houses. Let's just say a lot more <laughs> blow on your wife in the game. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, classic job. Um, oh, and, and, but then um, but but then Three Houses. Um, it did. It wasn't the Fire Emblem that reinvigorated my passion for for it, but it was the one that I think that it, it, that that helped remind me why I love Fire Emblem in the first place. There is an there's a great story between the three cast of characters. No matter what perspective you um, you uh, you play, there's no canonical there's no canonical story. You know, rather than just go on and on, Graham, do you want to say anything? Uh, well, I mean, give it twenty hours. What? Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah Graham, Graham cheats at Fire Emblem. It's really weird. Um, um, however, I do, I do kind of want to talk more about Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. All right. Look, I, I, I feel like I'm kind of just like gonna bite my breath. And um, look, am I gonna convince any of you to vote for Fire Emblem? Probably not. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Graham. Um, Taylor, I had to bring it to you, but a Souls game did make it on the bracket this year. Yep. <laughs> uh. It's a Star Wars Souls game? Are you kidding, yes, dude? I is. already love this game. Yes, Holy yes. Shit. yes it is. Are you fucking um, serious? It is a Souls game, Metroidvania. You, you're oh, gonna, I'm going to die. I'm going to have okay, a fucking attack and okay, die. Okay, Graham, in defense, most most Souls games are uh, 3D Metroidvanias. Uh, not, not to the extent of unlocking new abilities that will allow you access to certain areas. Dark Souls 1 was, but fair point. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is Star Wars Fallen Order. Uh, F Fallen Order is... It's actually, uh, by the way, incidentally, it's on sale for only $10 on Steam at the moment. I'm getting yeah. it right now. I'm literally um, buying it as you're talking about it, Graham. This is... Like, I love Star Wars. I, I love yeah. Star Wars. I love, like, pretty much every Star Wars. Um, give me more Star Wars. I need Star Wars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, this game... They could have just settled just making a Star Wars game. Like, no one would have really bat an eye at that. But they actually... I just want to talk very briefly about the story, story uh, because I think it's a very strong aspect of this game and how almost every every character draws back to this theme of moving past trauma and how they either haven't or they may have, but in a really, really bad way that's not good. Um, so this is set five years after Star Wars Episode Three: uh, Rudge and Sif. Uh, you are a Cal Kestis who is a was Padawan during the Jedi Purge, uh, who after being discovered, his secret gets out. Basically, uh, joins up on this quest to try to keep a uh, holocron, which is basically uh, like a giant data vault of possible Force sensitive children, out of the hands of the Empire. Uh, who would use them to do nefarious things. Um, going along the way, Cal has to confront uh, basically his massive survivor's guilt because he went from being part of this massive peacekeeping core across the galaxy to just a kid alone on a junk planet basically overnight uh, and hasn't talked to anybody about it. And listening to his favorite song, Mongolian <laughs> Throat, throat Singing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is, um, is, it, it is a Souls-like. It doesn't do a whole lot different from, like, other Souls games, aside from, like, using, there's, like, platforms and puzzle solving, using your Force abilities. Graham, uh, can I ask? Yes. yes. How, how difficult is this game compared to something? Like, um, like, on the scale between, like, if Elden Ring is apparently beginner-friendly and Bloodborne is pretty I... hard... Then what's... I, when I replayed it a sec, the first time I played it, I struggled like a lot. Uh, I, I had there, there is like uh, an easy, easy mode for uh, I, that you could be able to, so that 
it doesn't have like difficulty settings. Uh, I would have to set, go to like very easy, very a lot. But when I replayed it, I was able to play it normal, no issues up until the final boss, where I was like, all right, I, I know my limits. Yeah, like there isn't really. I'll, I'll, I'll keep this short. We can make it for the last time. Uh, but there isn't really any much else to else to say because it's a Souls game, it's a Star Wars game. If you don't like either of those, it's not the game for you. Can I can I just say there are two really funny things though. Um, uh, there are two really fun things about Jedi Fallen Order. Um, first off, um, they have it, it because it's a soul because it's a Souls like it has probably the single most ineffective lightsabers in the history of the franchise. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, and also, <laughs> and also. It's a it's a Star Wars Souls like, and yet they're still inexplicably undead. They go to <laughs> they go to the one planet in Star Wars that predates Dark Souls and is just a Dark Souls planet. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, also, and, and Christian, you're going to love this. Uh, you have this little robot that hangs out on your back, and that is what delivers your healing items. Oh, you BB-1. Know what? I, I, um, it's a it's droid. Literally... His name is yeah. literally Buddy. He's great. Oh, I love him. I fucking, He's adorable. I fucking love right. that. We're at the end of the eight. So does anybody have any yeah. other thoughts that are relevant? Any final thoughts? Anybody hasn't talked? Anything? I think we're all good. Okay. Um, let's get to the vote because it's another four. The voting order has shifted. Graham, you start. Star Wars. Yeah. Taylor. I actually forgot that I knew what Star Wars game this was. I, like, forgotten that in 2019 there was a Star Wars game that I actually thought looked kind of more fun than other Star Wars games. Um, but it's still a Star Wars game. Um, I for, listen, Fire Emblem Three Houses is my favorite game of 2019, and um, I feel like I, I, I did a really shitty job pitching it because I kind of just took the losing battle that is the earlies and... It's not, you know, it's a good, it's it's one of the best strategy games you can ever play. If you like strategy games, you'll like this. Um, if you like Fire Emblem, you'll like this. If not, there's not a whole lot I can do for you, but holy shit, Fire Emblem Three Houses is good, and I'm voting for it. Okay. Christian. It means anything, Taylor. The, the, the game that Fire Emblem Three Houses is going against right now is actually so fucking pleasing to my ears that, you know, maybe Fire Emblem would have a better chance just going against something else. So, you know. I wouldn't say it's a doom doesn't, battle. It doesn't either. entirely, but I, I get I get the good intentions. Yeah, so I'm voting for Jedi Fallen Order. Okay. Mick. Um, I'm voting for Jedi Fallen Order. Okay. Clanky. I just love Star Wars, man. Mm. It's great. A lot of stars and a lot of wars. Okay. Well, joke's on you guys. Now I have three houses, all for myself. <laughs> oh no! Uh, I, it's on my honorable mention. It's on my honorable mention twice. But you didn't. So Graham has six houses. Copy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah that's, so Graham actually has two. All right. So that's nine. Graham has total. two of the houses. Only one right. for you, my friend. <laughs> so no, Graham just three. gave up his lease. Okay. Right, so we we saved ourselves some time on that one. Get but popcorn. Next, we okay. have. First of all, okay, we have we have. Ace Combat 7, which is uh, Skies Unknown, which is a Graham game. But we also have Death Stranding, which is a Mick pick. Okay, and... Jordan, I'm going to go first. I'm setting my own timer because now it's a challenge to see how fast I can actually do this in. Um, okay. I prepared so much in order to be able to in order to be able to talk about this game as quickly For as possible. For this, I'll be a bit more frugal. Yes. Uh, okay. But I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best to try and get this. Try and get all of this in under four minutes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start the Incidentally, timer. Incidentally, if you guys ever get lost, don't stop me because it's not going to – It's not. you can ask questions afterwards, okay? Okay. All right, okay. starting the timer now. Okay. Imagine a coastline stretching infinitely in both directions. The land is the world of the living. The ocean is the world of the dead. When we die, we move from the land to the ocean. We enter the water at a section of the coastline unique to each of us, our own personal beach, shaped by our thoughts and beliefs about deaths. Okay, technically, and multiple people traumatically die together, like a bunch of soldiers in the battle. They all share a beach. Never mind, we don't have time. In the not-too-distant future, something happens that causes the dead, who should be in the ocean, to beach themselves. When a group of whales beach themselves, it's called a cetacean stranding, which makes this, because the dead are beaching themselves, a death stranding. What caused the death stranding is a spoiler, so I won't explain. That's where I thought we were the title came. Anyway, the souls of the dead that have been stranded in this world are thus referred to as beached things, or BTs for short. 
Uh, there are also creatures native to the Death Ocean. Also got stranded. These are also BTs, but don't worry about that for now. We don't have time. Sorry, Nick, desired... I need you to slow down a little because I can't understand you. <laughs> okay. All they desire is to reconnect with us. Unfortunately, their core is made of antimatter, so coming into contact with us will trigger a massive explosion of energy the size of a nuke called a Void Engine. If that wasn't bad enough, the presence of BTs is accompanied by something called Timefall. So there's this matter that exists in the world of the dead called Chiralium, which is possibly the same thing as dark matter, and after the Death Stranding, a bunch of it was released into the atmosphere. Well, the world of the dead doesn't experience the passage of time, and thus neither does Chiralium, so when it contaminates the clouds, it causes the precipitation they release, you know, snow and rain, uh, to rapidly age anything it comes in contact with. Oh, this is incidentally why America in the game looks more like Iceland, uh, because the terrain is being forcibly fast-forwarded through hundreds of years of geological processes every time it rains. America, and presumably the rest of the world, has been reduced to a small number of sealed and protected cities. In America, this becomes the, the USA becomes the UCA, the United Cities of America. And since there's basically no infrastructure connecting them, the cities rely on companies uh, that deliver goods and information between them using porters, who make deliveries on foot since the terrain is a bit too insane to use vehicles reliably. In fact, the UCA government basically performs all its governmental functions through a porter company called Bridges. Now, BTs are normally invisible to humans. In order to perceive them, porters use bridge babies. Bridge babies, or BBs for short, are unborn <laughs> infants whose mother is brain dead. Because of this, the BB has a connection to the world of the dead via a psychic connection to the still mother, quote unquote. Simulating conditions of the still mother's womb in a portable pod maintains that connection even when removed from the womb. Uh, then, connecting the BB pod. BB pod to a device called an aura deck, we don't have time, allows one to piggyback off the BB's connection to the afterlife and thus detect BTs. The exception, uh, the exception to humans not being able to BTs are those with a condition called Dooms. It's an acronym for something, we don't have time. Dooms allows one to sense, see, or even control BTs, as well as a whole host of other possible powers like teleportation. There's also a class of humans called Repatriates who can come back to life by swimming back to their body from the beach. No time. Our main character is Sam, played by Norman Reedus. He has multiple surnames. He will refer to as Sam Porter, literally just his job. Sam Bridges, the surname of his birth mother, no relation to the Porter Company, also called Bridges. And Samuel Strand, the surname of his adopted mother. Sam is a legendary freelance porter. His adopted mother is Bridget Strand, played by Lindsay Wagner, who is the president of the UCA. UCA. As her dying wish, she begs Sam to help his adoptive sister, Amelie, also played by Lindsay Wagner. Uh, Amelie had led an expedition across the continent with the Porter Company bridges, setting up infrastructure that will allow the cities and bunkers to connect with one another via a new system called the Chiral Network. It's basically the internet, but it transfers information instantaneously across infinite distances without interference by sending it through the beach. Yes, we're using the afterlife to send email. The goal <laughs> being to once again reconnect America. But when they reached the West Coast, before they were able to connect everyone to the network, they were ambushed by a terrorist group called the Homo Demons, we don't have the time to unpack that name, led by an Egypt obsessed <laughs> Troy Baker character called Higgs with the power to control BTs, and Amelie was taken hostage. Sam's quest is just to travel across the continent, connecting each cities and settlement to the Chiral Network, rescue his sister, make a few deliveries along the way, and finally, make America whole again. The game is a walking simulator where we make deliveries. That is the gameplay. It's great. I love this game. It's my number one game of 2019. I am out of time, and I've done it in al almost exactly four minutes. Nick, do you know what I Rats. feel like right now? What? I feel like that one Germa video <laughs> where he puts in the fucking Metal Gear lore in the CD. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god. Mick, I think I understand. So it's a 2D platformer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Alright, alright, um, okay. I have to go now. Okay, okay. So, I'm not, I don't have anything planned out. I don't have time. Uh, so... A lot of you, like me, uh, up until like a, a few months ago, probably thought the Ace Combat series was about jets. That is a lie. The Ace Combat <laughs> series is about mechs that operate on the rule of sharks, where if you stop moving, you die. You carry 80 missiles, and despite the fact that you're playing, visibly only has four. Uh, and you, you, ha you, you have a variety of mission structures that you have to go through. Uh, it's all, all jet plane stuff. However, uh, this game... Like, ev like almost all numbered uh, Ace Combat uh, entries is not set in our world. It is set in the strange real world, which is all kind of what the world's referred to. That hasn't been given an official name. It's just been called Earth, but it's not. Um, so the story of this game is that the country of Arusia has invaded the, company, the country of Yuzia uh, and with help from drones that are backed up by flight knowledge of 
uh, Arusha's greatest pilot, Mihail Dumitru, Margareta Cornelu, Leopold, uh, Bianca, Carol, Aeon, Ignatius, Raphael, Maria, Nicoletis, Archage, uh, Shalaji. What? That is his real name. There's, it's not a joke. That is his name. That is his full canon name. Um, part of the reason why they invaded was because they're, they fear that the superpower of this world, Oshia, uh, and with its newly built space elevator, is exerting too much control over uh, the over the continent. Um, and so you go to war. So you play as a pilot named Trigger, who very early on into the game uh, gets accused of a crime he may or may not have committed. And you basically get sentenced to what if the, the Suicide Squad was jet fighters? So, <laughs> of other, so it's other convicts. Previously, I, I'm frantic because Mick is frantic. I don't have to be frantic. Like I have other, to be frantic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of times we've recommended that you play games like on as hard as difficulty. My argument for Ace Combat 7 and a lot of other Ace Combat games is that for your first playthrough, play it on very easy because you are canonically the enemy's worst nightmare in that game. <laughs> like, other, you hear radio chatter from other pilots, and they go, Oh, fuck, it's that one pilot. God, this, we're fucked. This, this, play it on easy, this game becomes Doom, but with jets. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Lord. Um, but yeah, like, I have to convince people, I, I have to convince people about Ace Combat. Also, another thing I have to bring about Ace Combat, uh, the series, most of the series, they have the music in it. There's one god tier track that's usually the final mission, and with a couple of like all right, and with some very good mm. sprinkled in. This soundtrack has more like god tier uh, soundtracks than any other Ace Combat game I've played. I've played two in the past few months. I've been an Ace Combat fan. Um, however, even if the music isn't your cup of tea, you can always do what I do and just put on my uh, playlist that I made for for Ace Combat. Welcome uh, to Kenny Loggins Radio. All Kenny Loggins all the no. time. So oh, that okay. is that is that do, 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 oh, before do, I, even, I almost forgot. Do, 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 uh, so there is Top Gun Maverick DLC for this game. Oh man. Which what? includes a cover of Danger Zone by the composer of this game. Great. You you could just put on like whatever like classic rock like I have like a bunch of uh, like different music in my playlist. Just put on the Benny Hill theme. Speedway towards an unsafe area. <laughs> uh, yes. All right. That is what I that is all I wanted to say about Ace Combat Seven. Do the people that weren't pitching this game have any comments or questions? My for these games. Feels, my head feels full. <laughs> <laughs> All I right, shared maybe... my Death Stranding notes in the voice channel uh, chat, uh, if Please. anyone wants to. Uh, and if you'd um... like, you can read us. Get it? Because Norman Reedus is in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Incidentally, I do want to... There's something I want to clarify, and this will be short. Um, I mean, I, I referred to it as a walking simulator at the end. I actually don't think walking simulator is a very good descriptor. City platformer. Game. It's a strand well, type video game. Yeah, so the thing that I, I said walking simulator because it was out of time and I panicked. Um, because it is a game in which you walk, but the term walking simulator is usually it's a derogatory term for indie games where it's basically just you're listening to a, uh, someone tell you a story while you walk around um, hallways. Yeah. Death Stranding is not that. It's an actual like game. Like there is gameplay. Like, a lot of the gameplay is walking, but the walking is gameplay. Like, it's not just walking, it's hiking. And there's a really big difference between walking and hiking. Um, oh, God. The mick that is cursing out Graham for voting for Journey over um, Spec Ops. Spec Ops, the Spec Ops right now. With the quote, Journey's a fucking walking simulator, Graham. That mick <laughs> probably feels very foolish right about now. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Well, that, that, that's why I felt. That's why I need. That's why I needed to rapidly pull back and say, okay, Death Stranding is not actually a walking simulator, no, but that's the easiest way. To... Not every game is 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 as by the walking simulator numbers as that. But I will say that I feel like if you need to associate Death Stranding with another type of game, you're going to associate it as a walking simulator. Just no, 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 no. and that and yeah, no, it definitely is. Like, cause like that's the cause it is it is but a would... game. It is a game that simulates walking. 
But I would argue that it's worse because it's 50 hours. More like Quaff than Journey. Honestly. Well, ex that's the thing. It's a it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of figuring out the uh it's a lot of figuring out okay, how much cargo can I carry? Um finding ways of navigating through complex obstacles um such as, you know, um bringing so, so like, you know, you'll sometimes need to um climb on top of things and so you'll bring a you'll bring a ladder, but a ladder is extra um weight that you that uh, extra weight that might uh mean you can't bring as much cargo as you would like to be able to bring. Um, 50 hours, man. It's a lot of fun. Relaxing experience. And it's not here. purely that. There is combat. Yeah. Um you I have heard... to you have, you have to you have to fight off and deal with um there are these I, I couldn't even mention them. Um there were there are bandits called m mules who have basically they were porters who just got obsessed with making deliveries to the point that they never want to stop making deliveries and so they just steal packages and then never deliver them so that they're always delivering. And there's that, and for the most part, it's like it's like actually non-violent combat. It's like tying them up. It's like it's like uh, shooting them with ropes to tie to tie them up, or, or getting into fist fights and stuff. And there's stealth portions when you're trying to sneak around the BTs. You're also throwing grenades made of your own shit, feces, and blood. I can't go into it. No time. It's a lot. It's a lot more than that. It is in Death Stranding is one of my favorite games of all time. Anything else needs to be said about either of these? I'm ready to see how everyone else is going to vote. <laughs> okay. Okay. Graham goes first. Ace Combat. Of I, course. I, much as I love Death Stranding, I, I haven't... You played Death Stranding? I, I, yeah, I didn't get... I got, like, 20 hours into it. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Taylor. I don't know, man. Can I just vote for Puss? <laughs> Puss is not eligible this year. I mean, right, it could me... be if y'all Nor wanted. was it last year. Wish you get to say that. I um, look. I can because I, I can me, atone bastard. for my. I can atone for my mistake. By the way, Graham, jokes on you. You started your Ace Combat pitch with all right. So we all know that Ace Combat is a jet pilot game. Jokes on jokes on you, Graham. I didn't know what Ace Combat was until this bracket. Same. Really? Well, I mean, kind of, but like, not really. Um. I really listen. Neither of these games appeal to me all that much, but one of them has the brand recognition that is Hideo Kojima, who is a who is a game designer that I really respect. Yeah. So Norma, Norman Reedus and the Magic Fetus. <laughs> do people call it that? Some people do. People yes. People call it. I've heard people call it Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus. Oh, that's funny too. Yeah, that's its European name. Ah, oh, those funky <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Christian. I have the opposite problem, where both of these games massively appeal to me. And... No, I can't vote yet. Please, uh, go on. Okay. Mick. Death Stranding. Clanky. Uh, I'm probably gonna give it to Death Stranding. And we're back to Christian. Well, that makes my it's decision a lot ones. easier, knowing it doesn't matter, given it's ace combat. Let's go. Okay. Oh, yeah, Christian. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. These were both you can be my right. wingman anytime. Yeah, I want to listen to that playlist. Get it, wing? <laughs> Take my breath away. But ace combat isn't about planes. <laughs> wing. Right. No, it's Max. It? It's Max. Max. Our next matchup is... It is. I had it. I had the. Okay. It is Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening, which is a clanky pick, versus Sunless Skies, which is another Mick pick. Who wants to go first? I just. I would like to preface something, but then I assume Clanky will have a lot to say. Okay. I will start um, the timer now. So I just want to address the fact that we have a remake on here after last year's thing. And I just want to I just want to remind the audience that the reason that we gave Shadow of the Colossus, or I gave Shadow of the Colossus a lot of shit, is because as a remake, I don't think that game matters all that much. Now we have Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And if I if, and I am strictly talking about Link's Awakening as a remake, which I think makes the Game Boy Color version obsolete and you shouldn't play it because the the, op the Game Boy Color version has outdated game mechanics. Link's Awakening fucking has better button mapping, so they have permanent things <laughs> mapped to your buttons. Link's Awakening has a dungeon builder. Link's Awakening has extra heart pieces. And also, Link's Awakening is a child's toy box, and it is adorable to look at. 
Aww. Can I, can I, I can, sorry, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Sure. What is actually different about the gameplay? Because I wasn't aware of that. So in, um, the main thing is the, the Game Boy buttons. As you know, the Game Boy has a start select, A, B, and a yes. D-pad, and that's it. But the Switch controller obviously has quite a bit more buttons. In the original Link's Awakening, your sword and shields were items that you could switch out, and you kind of had to switch them out from your A and B buttons because there were some mechanics that required you to run using the Pegasus boots and jump using the, the Pegasus boots. I don't know. The helmet know. rock feather or thank something. Thank you, thank you. Yes, the rock feather, yeah. So um, you, you would essentially have sections where you're forced to not have any weapons or any way to defend yourself to clear through areas. Whereas in Link's Awakening on the Switch, they map the, the sword always to be with the A button, or one of the buttons, and they always map the shield to be with one of the buttons too. So the biggest problem with the Game Boy version was the fact that, you know, your combat was very limited, and you had to constantly keep pausing the game to make sure that, like, you know, you're switching out yeah. items. And in okay, this game, I, yeah, since okay, you I, don't have to do yeah. that, it's better, yeah. I get you. No, I was just sort of like, my, 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 my thought was basically like, is this really as big of a difference as as as, as fixing the, the the camera and controls Trust in, Resident me, the... e in Resident Evil? And you would just explain that to me. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's as big of a deal. That's the pacing, yeah, big it, deal. The pacing difference that, is huge. I, yeah, I would argue that the Game Boy and Game Boy Color originals are unplayable nowadays. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. They, and, they sound uh, pretty unplayable, I mean, honestly. Well, look, you can play them, but it's like... You shouldn't. Why would you? <laughs> yeah, like it, I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting for them to remake the Oracle's games because I actually think those are better than Link's Awakening. And that's um, and you know that's probably a fair take. I haven't played the Oracle games, but I'll probably they're really fun. It's just, play them back I, to back. Yeah, I'll I'll be really quick because I want Mick to get to Sunless Guys. Uh, yeah. But uh, Legend of Zelda: uh, Link's Awakening, I think, does the 2D Zelda format really well. And I think I talked about this during Breath of the Wild, but just in case I didn't, I think that I prefer 2D Zelda to traditional 3D Zelda. And Link's Awakening basically gave me the opportunity to play a 2D Zelda game that has technically existed for years, but I pretty much never wanted to play because the control seems so awful. But you know, actually playing it, it's it's like you know, Taylor pretty much covered it all. The story, or, well, I'll get back to the story in a sec, but the graphics I didn't say anything are really about the story. nice. Yeah, yeah, I, I realize that, so I'll, I'll say something about it at the end. But, like, the graphics, I think, look really nice. I think the toy box aesthetic, even though a lot of people don't like it, I think it's very charming and fits the game very well. I think that the gameplay was actually fixed and made the game playable, like I said. And I, I, I really love the story. I think it's very cute and honestly kind of has a sad ending. I mean, you know, you, you can argue that, like, oh, you know, it has a happy ending or whatever, but I, I think that the ending's a little sad when you think about There's it. There's a little um, bit more depth than you, like, first think when you play the game. Like, you have to, like, exactly. really stop and evaluate what the game is telling you this game is and when exactly. you like stop and I, think I really about it like, for like a minute it's really fascinating yeah i really like the story that this game tells i like the fact that it's not in your face with the story it's kind of subtle in that way and i i just think that it's one of if not the best 2d zelda that's currently out and that's my opinion it's not the best 2d zelda i will say that but and it's, it's the best 2d zelda currently out. <laughs> <laughs> moving on have you played a link between worlds and it's the best so Zelda currently out. I have played Link Between Worlds. Yes, I have. Okay. So, um... So you guys remember Sunless Sea, right? Yeah, the thing that killed The Witcher 3. Go on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so Sunless Skies is the... Uh, is a sequel to Sunless Sea, um, mm. which it, it's basically a total improvement on everything about Sunless Sea. Um, it, it, get, it looks more beautiful. It um, it's it plays better. Uh, the controls are better. Um, the art is updated. Um, the actually the writing is exactly as, the same, but the writing is perfect. So you know you can't really do anything about that. Um, as for the premise of the game, um, this one I also tried to pare down. Um, it was actually a lot easier than Death Stranding, as I found. I got it to one paragraph. Um, but uh, what's going on? So the sun suns are alive. Um, they are they're they're called the judgments. They are alien gods who govern reality. Oh, um, sure. After finding a gate from beneath, you'll understand if you played the uh, sun, a sunless sea, uh, into the high wilderness, i.e., outer space, the British Empire kills our sun and replaces it with a clockwork one under their control. Thus, her eternal majesty, Empress Victoria, now reigns from the throne of ours from which she controls time itself. Um, but the High Wilderness is not outer space as we know it. 
Uh, winds howl through shattered celestial ruins. Fog coils amidst stellar jungles. An industrial sprawl chokes the heavens with smog. Uh, you play as the captain of a spacefaring steam locomotive from which you can sail the stars, smuggle souls, barter for barrels of time, betray your queen, murder a son, or stop for cricket and a nice cup of tea. <clears throat> Even if you don't like space, you would probably enjoy Sunless Skies because it is the most... To? I, I wonder. It is the most unspace-like space game ever. Um, like, the opening is a jungle level. Hmm. Like, it's outer space, but it's a jungle level. It's hard to explain. <laughs> it's kind of like Mario Galaxy in the sense that, like, do, don't you have to wear spacesuits? No, nah, no, nah, you just have to bundle up because it's a bit cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also, uh, and, and, oh, and also, you can't really expose yourself to the light outside because you'll start going insane. But that's why we hit, that's why we've installed stained glass in our locomotives so that the, <laughs> so that the insanity doesn't reach you. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a hoot. Yeah. Um, the gameplay is basically, I mean, it's like sun, it's like sunless, uh, it's like sunless sea. You travel between different ports, trading, uh, completing quest lines, um, talking with people. Um, the game is a lot, the game's a lot bigger than sunless sea. It's three times as big as sunless sea. Um, like take three, three maps the size of sunless sea's map and just like. Yeah. Hello. Hello, mm -hmm. everyone. Hello. Mech? The map was so fucking big. <laughs> so big it killed Mech. The map was so big. The map killed Mech. <laughs> it's still loading <laughs> to this day, they say. Oh, God. Can we put a big loading screen on Mech right now? We are never going to finish this on time. <laughs> we are absolutely going to finish this on time. Help. <laughs> the map fucking killed me. <laughs> Mick, that map hey. is fucking huge. Hey guys, I'm on my phone. Hang on a minute. Oh, never mind. My computer's back. Let me get back, back on. Okay. Okay. Mick sounds so different from phone to computer. That's that is wild. just how it is, man. That's Whenever wild. I talk with Christian on my phone and then I get on with him on the computer, I'm like, he was sick a minute ago and now he's better. <laughs> a minute ago, he was saying, Ruh row Raggy. Ruh row Raggy. <laughs> Rut row raggy. It's not specific. These edibles hit different. It's, it's well, that's Scooby what you were doing, apparently. No, it's Scooby Doo, but he's melting. <laughs> oh, that's sorry. What was the last thing I said? Mick, you, you were said, talking about the map of Sunless Skies. You said this map is so big that, and then you just stopped. Really, that far back? Oh, I was going on for a while after that. Uh oh, no. Um, uh, what's going on? Um, uh, but um, yeah, it's it's the size of Sunless Seas map times three. Yeah. yeah, he just uh, went on and on and on. <laughs> listen, no, I was going on about a bunch of other stuff. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't even remember what I was just talking about. Crying into the microphone. Can you guys? <laughs> it's family. And you actually can. Um, oh, nice. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, any, listen. Any questions? I, mean, I guess I don't it, know. It's it's like this, right? Sunless skies. When I looked at sunless skies, I'm like, this looks a lot like sunless ski, sunless sea. Sunless skies. Um, <laughs> Nuns in their panties. Um, I, I guess. I guess for me, it's not even a matter of if it's in sp it's space, but Taylor would enjoy it. It's a matter of if Taylor's going to play this franchise, he'll probably play Sunless Seas first. Yeah, mm. um, that's reasonable. Uh, like because and, you and know. then you play Sunless Skies after, like. Well, yeah, no, that's the thing. Like, if this is, if, I mean, the the basic pitch here, Mick, is Sunless Skies is Sunless Seas, but more. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess I'm approaching it from that from that perspective. Like, like it's it. Yeah, I mean, you could enjoy, like you like you don't necessarily need to have played Sunless Seas to enjoy Sunless yeah. Skies. But I like uh, to see how a game franchise can evolve over the course of its consecutive sequels, and then when you go backwards, you feel a lot more restricted by what's yeah, there. And I should, I mean, I, I should say the thing you'll notice the most is the art is so much better in Sunless yeah. Skies. Yeah, I don't remember where I landed on Sunless Seas last time because I was way more fur uh, furious about it killing The Witcher Three. But I don't, you know, I'm not saying it's a never thing, but uh, we'll see how that reflects in the vote, I guess. All right. I, I am ready uh, to I, do. Yeah, I mean, is there anything else we need to go about? I don't think so. 
Okay. Uh, starting with Graham. Uh, some of guys. Taylor. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mick. It's still Link's Awakening. Okay. That's understandable. Christian. Some of guys. Sorry, Clanky. Mick. Sorry, Clank. Sunless Skies. And Clanky. Ah. Well, now Matt Taylor's definitely not going to try this franchise. I'm here Link's for you, awakening. Clanky. I'm here for you, buddy. Link's thank you. Link's Awakening. Hmm. Eh, listen, I'm not as angry. I like Link's Awakening a lot. It is still a remake at the end of the day. All right. So, okay. Guys. It's a bracket with a 2D platformer, and it's going against Super Mario Maker 2. <laughs> we did How did I know that that was the joke you were going to make as soon as your mouth opened? Like, I actually because... didn't know where he was going to go. With I didn't did either, and I feel silly that I should have. I've been thinking about it for 20 minutes. Anyway. Oh, thank God. <laughs> this is uh, Mini Motorways, which is a clanky pick, I believe. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, before we begin, I just want to let you guys know, uh, Jedi Fallen Order has been installed on my computer. Nice. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Right. Cool. Mini Motorways, which is a clanky pick, versus my wild card pick, Super Mario Maker 2. <sighs> Cue the Jordan sigh and the Jordan commencing that this is going to fail and die in the loser's bracket. Listen, Jordan, I'm not I... Sure. I, I... Jordan, I, I genuinely think that I don't have gonna. I don't think I'm gonna have a single game on this bracket that gets past losers round one. <laughs> if I'm being honest, so I think Mario Maker Two's got it. Would you mind if I defended Mini Motorways first? No, I'll go for it. That's why. Yeah. Okay. All right. On the road, man. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Mini Motorways. Um, it's it it. it, it Basically, it's a, a, a simulation game, I guess. It's it's more like a, I guess, like a management game, right? So the idea is that there are these buildings that pop up that are certain colors. And there are houses that pop up that match the colors of the buildings. And your goal is to connect roads to uh, get the houses to the buildings and get them to drive back. But the kicker is that most of the time the buildings will spawn in ways that make it so traffic is inevitable. You'll have a red house and blue houses like all right next to each other. And then like a blue building and a red building together. And the most optimal way to build it would be to make one road that connects it. But really what you want to do when you're playing this game is try to avoid traffic building up as much as possible in your city before um, one of the stores, I, I don't know, one of the buildings circle goes all the way up and then your game is over. Um, it's a game that sounds very boring. I won't deny that. But Mini Motorways is so addicting. And there's just no other way to explain it. It's one of those games that I feel like if I just need like to kill like 10 or 20 minutes, oh, I'll just play a round of Mini Motorways. It's one of those games. Um, it... It like it. It's just I don't know. I don't really know how to defend this game unless you've played it or you've seen it being played. Because I I feel like if you're describing this game to someone, it really does come across as a very boring game. But it's one of those that like when you start it off, it starts off very easy, and you're like, well, I don't understand how this can possibly get hard. And then it's ten minutes later, and you have to constantly keep pausing time to rebuild your roads to make sure that like certain cars are able to get to certain buildings. And uh. Yeah, it's just like, it, it's just a very fun time, and it's very, it gets very hectic, especially towards the end, and it, I, I just, I just love the game. Um, I haven't next, played Mini Metro. I, I, I feel like the only way I'm going to get people to vote for Mini Motorways is if I, is if, and I'm sorry, you know. Clanky, I'd like to remind you that Mick hates Mario. I okay, that's hate a, Mario. Two, two, two votes uh, for Mini Motorways is still a loss, Taylor. And I'd also like so, to remind you that Christian likes to pick the controversial thing, which is and what I think Taylor the controversial thing. He's mad. I, oh, I don't care. I don't care what goodness. wins in this round, honestly. I will say that I think Super Mario Maker Two I think is a good game, but it does not. In my opinion, it really didn't improve much from Mario Maker 1 until, Hang on. Like, post, until let me talk, until post-launch <clears throat> DLC. And at that point, it just reminds me about how aggravating Nintendo is for the fact that they can't finish their games by the time they launch. Um, and mm -hmm. I feel like Mario Maker 2 is like a perfect example of that. Only because like they added how many new game like modes, right? They added new Super Mario Super Mario 3D World, which what they kind of had to make up for Mario Maker 2 because that style of like no, was that not wasn't in, DLC. I w no, the Mario the Mario World stuff was not DLC. No, 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 no. You said 3D World. 
Yeah, yeah, the 3D world stuff was not the, DLC. The 3D world, yeah, it was not DLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, okay. I, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the only thing that they really introduced to the game when it first came out. And they, it wasn't even like styled like the Mario game that it said it was being styled off of because Super Mario 3D World is a 3D Mario game. And, you know, Mario Maker makes it a 2D Mario game, which isn't a problem, but it's kind of weird that they didn't pull from other Mario games like that actually are 2D, like Mario 2, like Mario Lands, like, you know, games like that. I don't know. I just feel like Mario Maker 2 in a lot of ways was very disappointing as a sequel. And by the time they started adding the stuff that was interesting to the game, like the uh, open world, not open world, what am I trying to say? Like the world's map and everything and the Link costume. I feel like just no one really gave a shit at that point. Hold. It was a shame. Jordan, play say, my objection. I just gotta say, I gotta say, Clinky. Well, hang on, really Mike, good. I objected. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> That was the only thing I wanted, Clanky. It was the only thing I cared about. Do you want to know why I didn't play the first Mario Maker? I have it on my shelf sealed and I never touched it because it's just a bunch of levels. But Mario <laughs> Maker 2 is a bunch of games. Mm. They fucking took the one, because what's the best part of any 2D Mario game? And this is a very stupid thing to say out loud. The best part of any 2D Mario game is the world <laughs> I disagree. I think the levels it's not are the true. best no, part. No, it's not, no, horrible, it's not no, it's, I'm sorry. It's not. That's not really true. But I love the world map of Super Mario World and Super Mario Brothers Three so much. And all the time, I like. I loved finding secret exits. I loved watching how paths connected. I think there was so much creativity. And I have all. And I always thought, like, hey, if content creators are going to make bunches of levels and level packs, then they should put that into a game. And that, that incentivizes me because then you have more thematic designs. You are able to get more creative. You are able to have setup and payoff with your levels. And that's all I ever wanted. So even though I haven't played Mario Maker 2, I put I plan to put time aside to one day pick it up and just play a bunch of Mario games because that's how I'm going to play Mario 2. I'm not going to pick like a random level and hope that it's good. I'm going to play Mario games and it's going to rock. I I will say though that the world maps that they add seem very rudimentary. They don't really a little do basic. anything. They don't any do anything fun with them like how Mario 3 had the traveling enemies and Mario World had like the switch palaces and shit like that. Well, it like, goes back you, to what you said. Nintendo was kind of stupid. Um, yeah, Nintendo rushed this game out the door, and my issue is that they didn't add the stuff that made it interesting until, like, fucking ten months after. And at that point, I'm kind of mad at the game itself for that, because I just, like, complete the game before you release it. I, I know, and, I, and Clanky, I 100% agree with you. Fact of the matter is, though, it's 2022, and how do we look at this game now? And now it's finished. And now it has the world mode. And that's enough for me. But you know, I gotta say, then, can I, would I just argue say, that the, okay, go ahead. I can I say, it's really bizarre to hear someone argue about the game, ha the, the game has a lack of content from a game that literally just says, make your own content, fuck it. The problem is that it doesn't have, I guess like the lack of content like by itself is wrong, but like compare it to Mario Maker 1, besides, like there's really Which not no much. Content. I, yeah, and it's like Mario Maker 2 added like world maps and a Link costume, and it's like, yay, but that's not like, I don't know, that's not enough in my opinion to say this is Mario Maker 2 well, compared to like Mario Maker Deluxe. I mean, but mm. like if you ask like level designers who like actually use the tools, like they'll, I, I, I don't know how they, how they feel, but I imagine it's, you know, it's more about the tool making, like how is Little Big Planet? Three different between two and different than one. And yeah, people who spend I... like. From what I understand, Mario Maker 2, despite having some more options, is actually a worse design platform. That's that's what I've heard, too. I, I, I don't know. I... Pad, I think the gamepad for the Wii U is, like, really only demonstrated being used very well for games like Mario Maker. Because the idea of being able to place all your blocks with the touch of a finger or the stylus or whatever, it works perfectly. In Mario Maker 2, coming from someone who's made levels in Mario Maker 1 and 2, making levels in Mario Maker 2 feels like a fucking chore. And I mm. hate to say that, but, like, the only real way to do it is to take your Switch off the dock get one of those like styluses that work with you know touch sensitive things and make the levels that way and even then it's not i don't know i still feel like i enjoyed making levels in one better all right well look and if that's the let, whole point of your game then I, I don't know look thank you let me let me let me give a closing argument that we can both then at the end of the day 
Mario Maker 1 is a level creator. And for me, Mario Maker 2 is a game creator. And that's, even if they're the same fucking package, that one thing matters that much to me. Mm-hmm. I'm Listen, mm-hmm. dude, I'm just fighting tooth and nail for one game to Look, Clancy, I Wizard watched Ryan. you stream any motorways, and I got, and I'll pro, I, I'm not saying I would never play it, but I will say that because of how, enge- like, how in depth you were at the time, like, it was difficult to understand the rules. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. I would have to like sit down and play it myself. It's not. It wasn't as easy to understand by just watching. Yeah, it's not. It's not that kind of game. But like, it's it's it is very. I guess like simplistic once you get down to it. Like the, the, there are strategies that you can implement in everything. Yeah. But like it, you don't know that the first couple times you're playing. You know, it's yeah, something sure. you figure out as you play. If we're going by originality, many motorways wins. But what is Taylor going to play first? Well, Taylor, I would actually recommend because I, I mentioned this. I think I think I don't know if Clanky heard me. Uh, I've never. I've, I realized as Clanky was explaining Mini Motorways, I've actually played the spinoff game Mini Metro, which actually, is actually making... Mini Metro came first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, even better. Um, uh, that where you're making subways and things like that. Uh, that's a really cool one. I think Taylor, you'd really like that one, and it actually makes me want to play Mini Motorways more because I didn't know yeah. it, a sequel existed. But, mini, um, yeah, Mini Motorways is essentially Mini Metro, except instead of making a subway system, you're making roads. Highways, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Motorways, no, I, if you I, will. I genuinely want to check it out now. Um, if Steam would fucking work, I'd get it. But, um, or, uh, you know, there's other ways, probably. But You can, yeah. uh, the only other place to get it, unfortunately, is getting a subscription to Apple Arcade. Ah, which yeah hmm. and you'd have to play it on your phone which it is it is a decent phone yeah. game i do think it works a lot better on pc though okay fair um any other comments on either of these games to the vote um graham goes first uh unfortunately i have played smart Maker you when i have it so i have to vote for that okay taylor I'm sorry. I'm just still reeling from the fact that Jordan recommended me a game in the years. <laughs> it's it's um, it's incredible. I'm just as surprised as you are. Yeah, um, Clanky. I actually will probably one day play Mini Motorways. It, like uh, the management aspect. Like I'm I'm like slowly realizing I kind of like those things. Like I'll pop on Roller Coaster Tycoon every once in a while and have a great time. Um, pull the trigger, Taylor. Just pull the trigger. <laughs> But I'm sorry, man. It's Mario Maker 2. Boom! I think Many Motorways is still going to win if that makes you feel better. Uh, well, Christian. With much love and respect to Mini Motorways, <laughs> I have to vote for Super Mario Maker 2. I. Okay, and Mick. Uh, Mini Motorways. Okay, and Clanky. <laughs> You know, this is sad, right? Because at the expense of Clanky's suffer uh, happiness, Jordan finally gets a wild card passed round. And I feel bad about it because even now, I would have voted for Mini Motorways. <laughs> <laughs> damn, God damn. Jordan, how could you? Right. You're going to take the damn wild card. Uh oh, bartender. You just. Well, I, I would have been sure I that there. I would have. I would have. I would have started bribery. I would have started bribery to make sure that wouldn't have made it past. I gotta break. say, it's Jordan and the monkey's paw curled. <laughs> I think the creators of video games are allowed to veto their own games being on the bracket if they vote. I think it has a right to be on the bracket, but I will hate you if you do it. Like that, so. no, 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 no. Can I say we should make that a rule because it's never gonna come up ever again? Yeah, exactly. It's not like <laughs> like I'm not. Hey, I could make a game, game for 2023. Not till the, the, I don't know. Right. There's right, gonna I'm come a not... point where I put on Shirk finds his onions. <laughs> you can't do anything oh, about right. it. Bug fables, the everlasting step. Sorry. Shirk finds okay. his onions Loser's is such an bracket. underrated classic. Loser's bracket time. Bug fables versus Tetris 99. Any further discussion on these? Please. Can I be honest no. with you guys? I'm I'm looking at this loser's bracket. I like Bug Fables chances. Really. I'm gonna. I'm, gonna I'm, I'm. I'm saying that now. And Jordan, when Bug Fables gets crushed in a minute, I want you to play this back. <laughs> I will keep this audio clip very handy, Taylor. Unless anybody else has any comments, it is your turn. Listen, I admit that in one of these games you can play Tetris, and in the other you cannot. <laughs> I get it, but Tetris Ninety Nine is also a battle royale. And Bug Fables is Bug Fables. 
So bug fables. Okay. So me and Graham have Apex Legends on our honorable mentions. Don't throw shade about battle royales. <laughs> yeah. That being said, I'm still voting for bug fables. Well, Christian. Uh, Tetris 99 is fucking fantastic. Bug fables, please. Mick. Uh, I will have one bug fables, good sir. <laughs> Before I forget, is, is Bug Fables a sequel to Fable? Can nope. you start a family in Bug Fables? <laughs> George, uh, Taylor, can you start a family in Bug Fables? There are families. I'm voting for <laughs> Tressus 99. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I wanted to know. Clanky. Uh, that's going to Bug Fables, my friend. And Graham, you making it a 5 0? Bug Fables. 5 0. By the way, um, I forgot that this isn't the whole loser's bracket, so. Immediately, I regret what I said about Bug Fables. Untitled Goose Game versus Katana Zero. <laughs> Can I say one more thing about Katana Zero? Yes. Katana Zero has this wonderful, like, escalation of your skill, where you start off the game, you're kind of fumbling around because you're still in the tutorial phase, and enemies are pretty weak, you know? They only, like, come up to you and, like, punch you, and maybe... And you see an enemy with a gun for the first time, and you're like, <laughs> fuck. You die like a hundred times to that enemy because this game is surprisingly difficult and you, the death is quick and it just rewinds you instantly back, which is why I made the Super Meat Boy parallel earlier. Um, and it's like, shit, this guy with a gun is tricky. Uh, eventually, you you get... But as you progress through the game, you become so good and you become such a badass that you could just clear levels where every enemy has different guns. And it's hey, like... Christian? What's up? Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. How long is Katana Zero? It's about not long. It's about four to five hours. Oh, um, the perfect appar length. Apparently, there is, from what I've heard, a great replay value. Okay. So I'm ready to vote. Yeah. Okay. Everybody else. Um, I just want to mention this, and Christian, this is not to throw shade at you. It is just to like create context. Um, you you have not beaten this game yet. Um, which is good because that means I can't spoil anything for you guys. No, no, it's not. That's not it. It's just you said earlier, like the game, like the game is telling you one thing, but you can do another. And I don't know a ton about this game. I heard a rumor that there that I don't know how how true this is, but there may be some true ending BS. And I'm just wondering, like, how true the things that you're saying are. I have no idea. I'm just keeping that in mind. Yeah. All that matters is that the game allows you to go against what the game tells you to do. And... But will it punish you later, I guess, is the question. <laughs> well, that doesn't matter, because it allows you it allows you to do bullshit. Yeah. 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 No, so I remember I... the I remember the argument, Mick. I want to be allowed to kill kids. I don't want to kill kids. I just want the choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, that's all I had to say. Okay, Taylor, it is your turn. Um, listen, at the end of the day, one of these is on my backlog and one of them isn't, and the one that's on my backlog is Katana Zero. Ooh. Christian? I fucking played Katana Zero just for the stupid yearlies, and I ended up mm. really liking it. So mm. I, I'm, I'm happy to say that I've played, it's a played for and voting for Katana Zero. Wow. Mick? It's an hour and a half, it's an hour and a half longer. I'm giving it the Katana Zero. Wow. Uh, Title Goose Game is not three and a half Plenty. hours. It's, it, so I just pulled up how long to beat, and Goose Game <laughs> apparently got a three hours. In the, in the, uh, in the all styles? How long is the all styles? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, uh, sick. No, sorry. All styles. Uh, three and a half. The vote. The vote has been cast. <laughs> sorry. What's happening? I'm 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 mourning Untitled Goose Game. Oh, okay. I'm all sorry. Right. I didn't even know that was you making those what sound effects. It? <laughs> it's going to Untitled Goose Game. And crap. Untitled Goose Game. Oh, oh. Graham, thank Clanky, you. Clanky, I hope you know that this vote did not please me, considering that Untitled Goose Game was also on my list of games. So. Uh, you know you know what vote isn't going to please me? Number 12 in the loser's bracket. Oh, that, oh, yeah, no. that one's a rough I wish I could throw you a vote there. Um, okay. Fire Emblem Three Houses versus Ace Combat 7. Any further comments? One last, one last thing about Ace Combat 7. So there's a mm. set of DLC for it, unrelated to yeah. uh, Top Gun Maverick, uh, where you, you, your goal is to stop a submarine captain who he and his crew were trapped on the ocean floor for like two years. Uh, and then when they found the sub, instead of giving them like therapy, they just put them back on the sub. 
So they go insane. <laughs> they go insane, <laughs> and the captain wants to kill ten million people to stop, uh, just to prove that he can kill ten million people. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I can think of an Ace Combat this is, fan. This is this is the worst, right? Because I feel like I'm at a party, and like I'm I'm the guest at the party, and like everyone is are these close knit group of friends, and everyone's talking about Ace Combat Seven. Like, hey, remember that in Ace Combat Seven? Ah, oh, dude, I love you. And I I'm in, the only and, one. No, no, no. It's no, 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 Taylor. It's like being at a party, and one of and you you thought you had a really fun, cool story, and then you find out one of the other people in the party walked on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, um, it doesn't matter how cool my story is. I can't beat that. Listen, yeah. I, I admit that when I talked about Fire Emblem a little <laughs> earlier, I was a little I was a little uh, upset about the time limit rules. But um, I, I also I, I just want to bring up one more thing about sub. <laughs> no, I, no, I really, no, 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 there's a great sense of like you build, you get to build a team. You built a close knit team of units from be, from the beginning of the game to the end, and you get to watch each individual one grow. And just watching each individual character gain like that necessary stat boost and strength, and seeing just how OP one individual unit can get is a really great feeling. And how how much control Three Houses specifically gives you over what roles you want to give each character. It's one of the only Fire Emblem games where there is no bad unit. And again, I'm talking to brick walls here, but I genuinely feel like I know a couple of you are interested in Advance Wars, and if you play Advance Wars and you end up liking it, please consider coming back and giving Fire Emblem its fair shake. Hmm. I vote for Fire Emblem. Yes, I figured. Christian. Ace Combat. Okay. Uh, Mick. Uh, Ace Com Ace Combat, yeah. <laughs> Thank to be fair, you. I actually have played an Ace Combat game. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'm giving it to Ace Combat. And Graham. Graham, it's already Fire lost. Three houses. Bought the, okay, thank you. <laughs> so I was about to say, you bought so the So nice land. you voted for it twice. Yeah. Um, now you can uh, share three houses. Okay. Yeah. But you don't actually mean that, right? <laughs> well, I Silence. Put, I put in the vote, so. Yeah. Um, now it's immortalized. Link's Awakening versus Mini Motorways. Um... I know what I'd vote for. Um, anything else to say about either of these? These motorways are so fucking small! Um, one of the other... Um, Minuscule, if you will. One of the other things that That's the remake of Link's Awakening that. added um, is there's a crane game in Link's Awakening, and in the original game, you just used the crane game to buy a Yoshi plushie that you could then start a trading side quest, but in the remake, you can buy like a bunch of Nintendo figurines and like plaster them all over the world. Which is, you know, not all that necessary, but is something you can do that is extra, and I think that's cool. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting I'm the first vote. Um, does anyone else have anything to say though? All right. Well, then, uh, Link's Awakening. Okay, Christian. Link's Awakening. Mick. Uh, mini motor race. Mmm, clanky. Ah. Uh. Kill one. I know. I have to. I I hate this, but I have to kill mini motorways. Mm. I have to. I have to vote for Link's Awakening. No, keep the dream alive. Keep the mini motor. Keep you the know, minuscule motorways dream alive. In some ways, this is still like Jordan's wild card losing first round. <laughs> <laughs> you think, listen. You think I'm happy about this? No. We already vote. But this isn't about you. Well, it, Graham, it is your turn. My picks. Um, it's about Jordan. What the? Graham has voted from underwater. <laughs> He's in the sub. He's, He's in the sub. He's gonna. Graham's gonna kill ten million people. Should we stop him? <laughs> what is he saying? Can he's <laughs> dying? His Wi-Fi is fighting him. Okay. We may need to give Graham subtitles when we edit this. God. 
Give him some si- give him subtitles, but make it say incomprehensible. <laughs> Gargling. I'm gonna make him say things in French. Or give give them sub give him subtitles like the like the like the board gets in a uh, uh, in a control where they just like weirdly translate it. In some words, it's like I don't know. This could mean this or this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Baba is you versus Devil May Cry Five. Does anyone coherent have anything to say about either of these? Two <laughs> D platformer. I like to report a burglary. <laughs> what? Don't worry. Um, let's move on. I just want to... Christian. Do you personally, knowing my game taste, think I would like Baba as you? You would like it, yes. Liar, liar. I, I mean, look, it, but I, I hate puzzle games, and Baba is You ended up being great. You don't hate puzzle games, and I think you would. But really I hate feeling it. stupid. Well, that's you why. Won't. If you want, you can do what I did when I played Baba is You and cheat. Got yes, it. You can cheat. So you know what game you'd really like, Taylor? Many more ways. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's not a 2D platformer. <sighs> It's the only game about? that it is in the 2D is. platformer. It's 2D. And uh, there are platforms in the buildings that are constructed. Hello? Mm-hmm. No. We're all just circles living in a world of squares. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whose vote is it? It is Christian's vote. Uh, you know what? This one's actually really hard. Um... All right. In that case, can I, can I plead a little? Christian... You are you you are self-proclaimed not a puzzle guy, but you have told me for weeks now how excited you are about sharing a list about boss battles. And mm. holy shit, does Devil May Cry have boss battles? All right, you don't need to say anything else. I'll vote for Devil May Cry. Mm. You can find a guy with a mouth on his stomach. I'll, I'll save you the time because you did all. That's all you really needed to say. Wow, that was all okay. I was gonna say. Mm. Nick. Uh, Devil May Cry 5. Clanky. Baba is you. Graham. DMC. Okay, and Taylor. Do devils cry? Maybe. Some so. may also ask, do lobsters lactate? Mm. Lobster may lactate 5. <laughs> uh, Lobster may lactate. I do. Oh, Graham, no. <laughs> Okay. Also, like any good, like any good Devil May Cry game, they awkwardly, uh, they awkwardly work the, uh, the, they awkwardly name drop the title somewhere in there. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Control versus Disco Elysium. Any Some more Disco game? Elysium comments. You can help a group of, um, of, uh, of, of nightclub junkies start a nightclub, and you have to decide whether or not they deal drugs in it. You, you mean can start a disco. You yeah, well, you can start a nightclub. Um, it's disco. You can walk around telling people that the end is nigh. You can be a doomsayer, and you get an achievement for talking about the end all the time. Um, You can also get an achievement for just saying, I am the law, over and over again. Um, There's also this one door that you can't open, and you have to, like, take in-game hours to ponder the idea of needing to open this door. Mm. And you can never open this door. In control... There is a there is a character. He is a janitor named Ati. He speaks with a nigh incomprehensible Finnish accent. Mm, um, like Graham did when his Wi-Fi was he there. He does not. He does not seem to be aware that you are the director, and instead believes that you are his assistant. Um, mm. He goes on vacation in the middle of a lockdown, and it's really like confusing where the hell he goes. But can I be honest, Mick? I I'm a little surprised that you haven't played Disco Elysium. Um, I was pl- I wanted to, I was gonna play Disco Elysium for this, but I kind of ran out of time. Yeah, no, I feel like of all of the things that I would want you to play that I could ever talk about in the yearlies, I feel like Disco Elysium is the thing I would want you to play the most. Oh no no no! Because... I'm totally with you. Disco Elysium is the game on here that I probably want to play the most. Outside of maybe Jedi Fallen Order, it'd be a hard. It's a hard choice between those two. Yeah, um, but like play it sooner than later. Even if you vote for Control, like 
you should have you should have been able to participate in the Disco Elysium pitch because you would have like if you like pitching Dark Souls two pitching Disco Elysium yeah, like okay. that's I like even though it's not my favorite thing on the bracket I was more excited to talk about Disco Elysium than anything else on here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you you can die because you're too awkward to say your chair is too uncomfortable. That's true, <laughs> and I did. <laughs> Is it okay if I vote? Oh, yeah, no, I was going to say, if we're good, then we can vote, yeah. I mean, I was waiting as if Mick sounded like he might have had one more thing to say yeah, about that's control. What I, thought. I, 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 was go- I, I, I was going to, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like it's kind of a yeah. lost cause. Yeah. To be honest with you, Mick, I don't think there's much more you could say about control. Disco, I'm sold mm-hmm. on Disco Elysium from, okay. from the very beginning. Right. So, Disco Elysium for me. Okay. Mick. Control. Mm-hmm. Clanky. Uh, I'm going to give it to Disco Elysium. Okay. Graham? Disco Elysium. And Taylor? I'm not positive that when I play Control, I might like it more than Disco Elysium. The possibility certain, it certainly exists, mm-hmm. but I've played Disco Elysium, and yeah, I love right. talking about Disco Elysium. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Disco Elysium. Awesome. Yeah, like, uh, no, no, don't get me wrong. Disco Elysium is one of the... It, it's like, <clears throat> I have no problem with that winning. Like, yeah. I have no problem with that doing well. That's My only problem with Disco Elysium is that it's too smart for me. <laughs> it uses really big words constantly. Yeah. So we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order versus Death Stranding. Um, just, just pull the trigger, a... boys. <laughs> Let's get to the vote. Christian. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Mick. Death Stranding. Clanky. I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars. Graham. Start Wars. And Taylor. Start. You know what? I don't want to leave Mick alone. Norman Reedus and the Magic Fetus. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was you 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 said it just before I was like, Taylor, please. Yeah, no. I like it's it would be cruel, right? I because for the poor. <laughs> and Mick, you're in a similar situation here, although I think you'll come out a little bit better. Sunless Skies versus Super Mario Maker 2. I have no more loyalty to this game. Oh, my am real I wild first? card pit apparently was many more ways. I can't I believe first? it. Um, um, I think Christian, Christian goes first. Okay, first. Yeah. I can't believe the fucking universe was like, no, Jordan, your scheme's <laughs> still gonna get losers round one. <laughs> Everything. Uh, I well, but, but Jordan made it for himself. Jordan, like, he saw that his his losers bracket went first. He's like, how can I rectify this? <laughs> yeah. How can I, I make this fit the narrative that I want to create? By the way, I'm voting for Sunless Skies. Okay. Mick. Sunless Skies. Yeah. Clanky. I think at this point, it's almost like a fucking, like, <laughs> I'm doing this out of spite, but Sunless Skies. Yeah. Graham. Sunless Skies. And Taylor. And, uh, all right. Well, that went that way. Mario Maker 2. Oh, thank you for not making that a 5 out. Uh, Okay, Baba oh, is it's about, you. It's about... <laughs> hmm? Sorry, I just, I just, I just looked down. Uh, it's all round oh, twenty. Um... These next few rounds are fucking integral. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm starting from the bottom up because uh, you people is... like it when I do that. Well, that's um, just the numbers. I know, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But yeah, do move on. Want, Baba is you versus Link's Awakening. What more can be said? Still Christian. You know. Link's Awakening yeah. also has puzzles, and they're really fun. Who, 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 who are we starting with? Mick. Mick is, it is your Oh, turn. okay. Uh, Bob is you. Okay. Clanky. Ah, uh, Zelda. Yeah. Graham. You give it to Zelda. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Taylor. Link's Awakening also has puzzles, mm-hmm. and they're fun. And Christian. Baba is sad. <laughs> <laughs> is that one of the uh, one of the choices you can make? Probably. I. I, I you can probably make him game. sad. Yeah. There are okay. mods for the game too. So. Yeah. Control versus Ace Combat Seven. I'm voting for Control. Okay. Clanky. Wait, no. Yes, Clanky. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm gonna give it to, I guess, Ace Combat. Okay. 
Graham. Ace Combat 7. Taylor. I'm going to give it to Control. And Christian. Uh, Control. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Ooh. Death oh. Stranding versus Katana Zero. This is it. This is my last one. Let's see what oh, I can boy. do. Oh, Still boy. Light. Yeah. Death Stranding. Um, Clanky. You go back to me. Mm-hmm. Graham. Uh, I played Death Stranding, so I'm rooting for that. Mm-hmm. Taylor. Clanky, you're going to end up being the tiebreaker because Katana Zero. Mm. Christian. Taylor is right. Katana Zero. And we're back to Clanky. Conan O'Brien is in the game. Really? Conan O'Brien is in Death Stranding? Is he yes. pulled Christian Walker, hasn't Texas beaten Ranger Katana level. Zero. We does cannot confirm pull? or deny does... that Conan O'Brien is not in that. Mick, but I highly, doubt, I highly doubt Mick. Guillermo del Toro Mick. is in it either. Does Conan pull the Walker Wait, Texas Ranger I... lever? Uh, 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 what's it called? Conan O'Brien gives you a seal costume. Oh, that's I crazy. just... Yeah, I just remembered uh, Jeff Keighley is in the game, so I'll be voting against us training forever <laughs> for now. Oh. Wait, did, are you retracting your lead? No, no, I, from now on, okay. I was just reminded. Okay. No, 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 but Graham, I... is Jeff Keighley voiced by Matthew Mercer? Oh, they yeah. balance each other out oh. and make it irrelevant. I'm sorry, did you just say Jeff Keighley is voiced by Matthew Mercer? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's a face model Jeff Keighley voiced by Matthew Mercer. No, that's, I'm sorry, that's a fever dream that you just made up. Can I ask a question about Katana Zero? Yes. How similar is it to like Hotline Miami? If people say this is like a two D hot, like a two D Hotline Miami. Oh fuck! All right, Katana Zero. Ah, damn. By the way, I want you guys to know that I've been holding back screaming the word zero because it's all in capital letters because I've I done that screaming joke. Yeah, we've, we've no, done I don't that. Think I'm I don't think Death Stranding would have beat Untitled <laughs> Goose Game either. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. And now it is time for the inevitable. Bug Fables. Well, let me announce the thing so that I can actually edit <laughs> okay, it properly. Sorry. Super Mario Maker 2 versus Bug Fables. Mick, I wonder what you're voting for. Super No, Bug Fables. <laughs> yeah. Clanky. Uh, Bug Fables. Graham? Bug Fables. <laughs> Taylor. Bug Fables. <laughs> Christian. It's not funny, Taylor. Bug Oh, it was going to happen eventually. <laughs> oh, I am not excited <laughs> for, <laughs> for okay. round 22. We do 21 first, so yes. Control versus Link's Awakening. Who's going first? Unless anybody has anything to say, it is now Clanky's turn again. Uh, is this between... Control, Control and Zelda. And Legend of Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. Got it. Okay, just making sure. Uh, that's Zelda. Yeah. Taylor. Wait, no, no, not Taylor. Graham. <laughs> uh, Control. I've played it. Okay. Now Taylor. Oh. Come back to me. Christian. Control. Uh. That means Mick. Yeah, Mick. Control. Taylor. Control one? Yeah. Then Zelda. Mm. Well, Christian, I'm a sunken ship like you now. Yeah, no, I'm about to be a sunken ship. Because <laughs> now we have Bug Fables against Katana Zero. Wave goodbye to Katana Zero, everyone. <laughs> All right, Clanky. Ah, uh, Bug Fables. Graham. Katana Zero. Taylor. Bug Fables. Katana Zero. Mick. Katana Zero. How did this keep what? happening to me? What the fuck? What? As much as I hate, as much as I hate Katana Zero for de for 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 defeating one of my favorite games of all time. But then again, if it wasn't for Katana Zero, it would have been beaten by Untitled Goose Game, which might have gotten on my but, nerves even more. I'd just like to rewind for a minute. Was there any point in any round that Katana Zero was in this year, at least, that you ever said a single thing about it? Who, me? Yes, you. 
No, no, no. He's saying he hated it because it killed Death Stranding. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, where did the Mick wants, Mick prefers Katana Zero over Bug Fables come from? Like, I didn't hear him say a thing about Katana Zero. Look, it's like super hot. I love super hot. Super. It's true. Super Super hot. Bug Fables, though. I'm sorry, but I know, but Bug Fables is dead. You killed it. (laughs) Hell, I have you killed Death Stranding. How do you think I feel? That's in my that's in my top five favorite games. Nick, I I stayed with you with Death Stranding. I know you stayed with me, but I'm trying to get you to understand. Of course, I understand, Mick. We're all allowed to be upset. It was just a plot twist. I can't believe after every single year, whoever loses gets deleted for forever. (laughs) (laughs) We're not playing by HBO Max. Lose what rules? You just you Game of Thrones to me. That's all. Whoever mm. whoever gets all of their games eliminated first gets Nickelodeon slimed. Oh, <laughs> that's something. Oh my god! Hang on, I'm choking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was swallowing when you said that, and I choked on my own spit. That's so good. Um, you dick. So now it's Devil May Cry Five against Disco Elysium. If there's nothing else to say, shall Battle we of the Double it? D's. Mm-hmm. Uh, we start with Clanky. Uh, I guess Disco. Yeah. Uh, Graham. Disco Elysium. Taylor. Listen, as I as I said before, Graham. Disco Elysium is solid, but sometimes it's a little difficult for me to keep up with how intelligent it is, and that that can hold me back from the experience at times. I couldn't recount to you exactly what happens in that story in some instances. It's just a very fun time. Devil May Cry is both amazing in terms of story and gameplay. Um, I mean, Disco Elysium's story is probably better, but the gameplay of Devil May Cry 5 takes this a very long way. At this point, I think I'm rooting for Devil May Cry 5 to win. Wow. Okay, Christian. Come back to me. Mick. Mm. I was going to say, come back to me. Um, are, Mick, are we the last two? Yeah, we're yeah. the last two. <clears throat> Let's deliberate. Okay. I don't know what So what do. are you thinking? Like, I'm thinking, like, <clears throat> Devil May Cry 5 has amazing boss fights and amazing action, but Disco Elysium feels like it would be a very thought-provoking experience. And like... Yeah, and I, I, I'm kind of with you, and I feel like if I had played Disco Elysium, I would be hands down Disco Elysium against Devil May Cry 5. But because I haven't, I feel kind of weird about saying that. Yeah. Um, because I really like Devil May Cry Five. There is also a part of me that's that wants to game the system, and since Katana Zero already lost to Disco Elysium, I'd rather pit it up against Devil May Cry Five. I don't think it's going to do much better against Devil May Cry Five. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's it's yeah, I, but you know, all right. I'm just going to pick what my heart guides me to. And my honestly, if both of these games are plopped in front of me right now, and you ask me which one I'd rather play, I would rather play Devil May Cry Five. Which leaves so you in a tiebreaker situation. Yeah, I'm a tiebreaker. Um, you know what? I'm I'm going I'm gonna say this just because I've played it and I haven't played Disco Elysium. I Devil May Cry Five. Okay. You know that was interesting. That was the first time I think two people had to pull each other aside and be like, "What are you thinking? How do you think we should play this?" I like that. Yeah, you don't get that often at all. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order against Some of the Skies. Oh boy, two space games. You're spoiled for choice, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> and they're both 2D platformers. Um... 2D platformers in space? Yeah. Can I say, um, Graham, was Disco Elysium your pick? Yes. This is your year. Like, mm. your, your entries are doing fucking fire. Well, I wanted his combat to do better. It's true, true. And I wanted Death Stranding a, to do better, all right? That's a we hard, don't... That's a, well, thing is, you went into this with people knowing what Death Stranding was. Okay, fair, fair, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. To quote <sighs> Mech himself, it's a fucking walking simulator, Graham. <laughs> when did I say that? Journey. Journey. Oh, Journey, that's right, that's right. What did I say? that? I play that bit daily, and you don't even remember. Such a great bit. No, I don't. Oh, my God. Can I say what I listen to daily is Clanky going, a game that no one has fucking played. 
I don't like. I don't even remember saying this. If I'm being totally honest. No, no. After, it, um... the, 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 I forget. I forget what it was. But you were like, "This is how it feels, Taylor. This is how it feels. This is how it feels, Taylor." For a game that you genuinely love to lose to a game that no, no one, one has, has played. Been... Yeah. And I remember. Someone please I, send me the time. I, I, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I remember Clanky and I were on the same side in that vote. Yeah. He was just really angry. Mm-hmm. It was so funny that one. Yeah, which, you know, which, some day, sometimes I have yearlies that I, I do really well, and then sometimes it's the 2019 yearlies. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I wanted Mini mo- Motorways to do better. I, um, I wanted better for Mini Motorways, too. Are you he didn't even know like... he wanted Mini Motorways to do better. <laughs> I he felt like in, in the 12th... In the twelfth round, it really, I really felt like fucking what was his name at the end of uh, at the end of of mice and men when he has to shoot Lenny in the face. Dude, I <laughs> Did you just George? spoil of mice and men? George, it's a fucking fifteen hundred year old book that you're forced to read in English class. That's of mice so and Star men. Wars Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs> yeah, and some was not. Um, if there's nothing else, um, Clanky. Uh Star Wars, Star Wars. Okay, um, Graham. Star Wars, nothing but Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> Give me those Star Wars. <laughs> One land. Hey, um, this is the Nick Winters show. <laughs> Bill Murray, uh, the legend. cocaine era of Saturday yes, Night Live. Yes, exactly. It was the best days of the show. Uh, Taylor. This is a really, really stupid question that proves just how little I'm paying attention, but sometimes Mick gets so lost in explaining the story of something, I completely forget what kind of game it is. Mick, what do you, what kind of game is Sunless Skies? Oh, yeah. yes. So you, um, let's go again. You pilot a, you pilot a steam space locomotive. Um, what, no, 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 you're pitching it. What genre is this game? Uh, that's the thing. I don't really know how to describe it. You go between no. locations and make deliveries. <laughs> Listen, I have a thing it's that I like. Branding. It's just it kind of is. It is kind of a strand type game. Now that you think about it. Taylor, do you need a genre? It's a 2D platformer. There. It's a Metroidvania. <laughs> no. It's it's top down. Uh, if you want to do combat, you have like an arc uh, that you can like shoot in. Taylor. Um, Taylor. So it's a CRPG. Taylor. Or do you want to no, know what kind of game no. it is? It's a Sonic game. Listen, okay, Nick, here. Crush 40 did the soundtrack. You have control over a ship. You go between ports making deliveries. You follow quest lines that involve going to different ports and following different storylines. The majority of the the majority of the story is uh delivered through um is delivered through text. The game is incredibly well written. It's mainly like it's like the plot is mainly delivered through text. Um and you know, it's really cleverly written. There are so many different um choices and options of things you can do uh, the quest the, the, there's a bunch of different quests with all branching path um all right all right um what's the score right now it is two to zero star wars jedi <laughs> uh then yeah, come back to me is it, it's my turn right. christian uh i'll make things easier for you taylor star wars okay um mick Nick. Um, Nick, do you want to deliver? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna vote for Sunless Skies because I yeah. played it. Yeah. And well, and not only have I played it, I sunk like 300 hours into it as well. Like it's it rivaled uh it it rivaled uh Hitman in terms of hours I played. Whoa. Yeah, 200 hours. You know, one of the things that I always when I listen back to these, I um. I um I'm listening to myself and I don't remember how I voted and I'm like gosh I wonder what Taylor's gonna vote for because I don't remember and I'm just this is totally an instance where I'm gonna vote for one thing and Taylor is thinking he's gonna vote for the other thing. Um, right now Star Wars just looks a little more visually appealing to me. I, I, I gotta be honest, like the top-down perspective of Sunless Sky, it looks kind of boring. Hmm. Okay. Star Wars, it is. All right. So we go to. Losers, right? I'm weirdly okay with this. Good news, everyone. If your game is here, you are in. I mean, you did just six. buy that game, so. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, you know, I also, yeah. Oh God, okay. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is gonna win the bracket. I just realized. <laughs> oh fuck. 
You don't oh, know that. God. You don't know that. You don't know, you don't know, know that. that. You First, Fallen Order has not gone up against Disco Elysium. We don't know how that one's going to play out. Well, here's okay. Well, Disco Elysium versus Katana Zero. Let's get that out of the way. Just get it over with. I already know how this goes. We already done this already. Yeah. Um. I think the voting order moves right. So it's Graham. Um. All right. So Disco Elysium versus Katana Zero. Uh, I have to go with Disbelief You because I've played it. Yeah. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, Disco Elysium. Christian. Katana Zero. Uh, Nick. Disco Elysium. Clanky. I'll give it to Katana Zero. Okay. I had some vain hope in my head that Mick had changed his mind, but... Oh, get, get ready. Get ready, Mick. If it kills Bug Fables, it can't kill Disco. <laughs> I can't lose. Oh, wait, yes, I can. Because both of them are going to get beat by Disco Elysium. Uh, yeah. Well, Sunless Skies versus Control. Uh, either way. Um, Graham goes first. Uh, Disco Elysium. Oh. <laughs> 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 right, so that's one. Mark me. One um, for Disco Elysium. Uh, <laughs> this is hard, but I think I play Control a bit more, so I'm giving it Control. Nick, he just wanted you to lose anyway. Um, Taylor. <laughs> I want you to know it was me. <laughs> Queen Graham Lena. Yeah, man. Um, it's going to be Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> Plus. <laughs> Taylor, um, or something for them. God. Man, God. Graham and Mick are just having a field day. This must be like candy for them. Yeah, um, yeah it's control. Okay. Uh, Christian. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Uh, no, Control. That's Sunless Skies. <laughs> it's control. control. Control, Control. I swear, I swear, Nick. Control. Uh, how did I rank them? Because I, 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 I'm, try I'm trying to... Uh... I think you put Sunless Skies at top. Yeah. Let's, let's Why did look. I put Sunless Skies and not the Stranding at the top? Whatever. Um, Sunless Skies. Okay. And Clanky. Sunless Skies. Alright. Wait, so who won? Control. Okay. okay. Um. So we do. This is our top Disco four. So, all right, we do Disco Elysium versus Control. We've already done um, this. I'm voting for Control. Everyone else is voting for Disco Elysium. Let's move on. Wait, was that the bracket? Oh, yeah, this was a while ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Unless any of you guys changed your minds. I, I can not. mention some things. Sorry. Maybe change. Maybe change your position. A uh, Christian. Uh, you can find. You can find. Uh, you can find. Uh, uh, screenplays for episodes of Night Springs. Oh my. <laughs> Look, dark, sexy twist. I, I, Mick, I'm not sure if there's a thing you can say. Unfortunately, I, that's fine for me at least. I appreciate it, the effort because I, I, I want to play control. The thing about this bracket is that all of these games, there has not been a single decision that has been easy for me. That that hasn't had my game in in one of the uh, in one of the slots. Oh yeah, no, no, like like same. Like I like look if Disco Elysium wins, it's like okay, great. I I really want to play Disco Elysium. It looks like fantastic and exactly the kind of game I'd enjoy. So you know, it's not like I, you know, yeah. But controls like after we're done with Alan Wake, we're going straight to control. It's happening. It's, who votes first? Alan um, Wake. Oh right, the game that lost to WarioWare DIY. It's still cranky, right? No, no, no. It's it's Graham. Uh, Disco Elysium. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor. Disco Elysium. Uh, Christian. I give Control much love and respect. I'm voting for Disco. Nick. Control. And Clay. Disco Elysium. All right. Uh, well, yeah. Any uh, game that makes it into the top four is all is already yeah. worth because when you're in the top four, you get your own placement <laughs> in the in the leaderboards. <laughs> yeah, you do. Devil May Cry 5 against Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Is this where Devil May Cry dies? I don't know. I really hope not. I, I really want Devil May Cry 5 to go all the way. And, like, at the end of the day, you guys say Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is, a, is, is you know, a Souls-like game, so it's cloning something else. Devil May Cry 5 is its own thing. Hmm. Devil May Cry 5 is very much a Devil May Cry clone. Nick? <laughs> not, 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 not now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Okay. Graham. Graham. Now, at this pivotal moment. Put up the subtitles. You've got to be kidding me. Wah, 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 wah. We're yes, so Graham. Close. Graham needs to vote three more times. And Dude, then... what if in Charlie Brown, every time the adults go womp, 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 instead of yes, ma'am, they go yes, Graham? Oh, what if every adult in, in Charlie Brown was Graham? We were so close. Back. You're back. Uh, it is your vote. Uh, it. So this is the school easy done by cry versus start or it's bottom over? Okay. Yeah. He really um, wants to vote for Disco Elysium. He does. <laughs> yeah, we really need the Graham titles. Jed Did you vote for something? Jedi. He, he said okay, Jedi. Okay. He said okay. Jedi. <laughs> there we go. He, you don't know. He could have said Evi <laughs> as in Evil in as in devil. Yeah. Are you saying? Trouble are you saying boo evil. or sure boo words? Are you saying boo words? Devil um, may cry five. Taylor, Taylor, for the love of God. Christian and Mick, I need your help here. I'm gonna vote for Devil May Cry five, and I'm gonna let fate do the rest. But I believe in you both. Clanky's a lost cause. Don't worry about him. But you guys. <laughs> Are the future of the <laughs> Honestly, the Taylor Clanky rivalries that show up in this in these yearlies are one of the most interesting facets yeah. of these things because I never saw that coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and me both, buddy. Here's the, here's the thing with me and Clanky, right? When we disagree, we disagree hard. But when we agree, we also agree hard. There's just yeah, no in between. It's, it's yeah, that's true. the thing. Yeah. When, hard. Like yeah. when me and Taylor disagree, we disagree hard. When we agree, we agree light. Oh. It's like, I love Devil May Cry. Let's just talk about it for hours. My favorite character to play is V, and my least favorite character to play is Dante. My favorite character to play is Dante, and my least character character to play is V. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> oh, you like Ninja Sex Party? What verse of this song do you like? <laughs> that was the most insane thing. You're like, my favorite bit of the song is this, and I'm like, that's my least favorite bit of the song. But that's what I'm saying. You gave me so much shit for it, I'm like, but that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> I can't believe that's the thing that you are, fucking happened. You are the definition of opposite sides of the same coin. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, 20, 2019 was like a rougher year, but twenty, uh, but for him, 2019 was gold, but 2017, he couldn't even let me have 2017. He couldn't be there for me with the best year for games. Whatever. It's okay. You have a chance to make up for it now. I'm voting for Devil May Cry 5, and let's see what happens. Christian? Take my energy, Goku. I'm voting for Devil May Cry 5. Okay. Mick. Come back to me. Clanky. Did you guys know that in the Star Wars Extended Universe, there's a character named after Shaggy Rogers from Scooby-Doo? Shaggy. Like Shaggy yeah. too. I just posted it in VC. Please look at it. Yeah. Zoink. <laughs> That's a vote for Star Wars, by the way, right? Zoink. That's a vote for Star Wars, my friend. Also, that looks and like it's from the back. Clone Wars animated. Uh... It is. It is, yeah. it is from the Clone Wars anime. It's oh, very Jindy. good. It's not an anime. It's, it's, it's an anime. Is, yeah. it, it's not an anime. It's not made it was it. animated, you know. It was animated, but it's not anime. I can't believe um, all, like, the bowling screen anime. illustrations are anime. That's why. Man, what if this? Mick. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. Am I a tiebreaker? There are Star yes. Wars anime. That's not it. Mick okay. is a tiebreaker. Mick, if I can just lightly say, one of the Star themes Wars. tonight, one of the themes you've had tonight is, you've played this one. And you like this one a lot, and that yeah, one is Star Devil May Cry Five. Star Wars silly sword laser go vroom. And sure, you'll have fun with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, definitely. But at the end of the day, you're going to like the Souls franchise more. It's not going to feel quite the same. And you're going to appreciate Star Wars, sure. But Devil May Cry 5 is its own beast. And Star Wars, you love, hold on, to be fair though, you also love Souls-like games. And, but, and I love like, Star Wars. Even, even, even a bad Souls-like game, like Dark Souls 2, well, not bad, but you know what I mean. You had a lot of negative things to say about that. You still loved and defended that game. So, to me, that's... I don't know if I actually game. defended that game. That's the weird thing. I think I just talked about how bad it was, and you guys kept voting for it for reasons unbeknownst to anyone. 
Oh, I, I, I and, loved hearing about Dark Souls. That shit was and it got that far for being the worst Souls-like game. So think about a Souls-like game. Nick, that think fun. about these nipples. <laughs> Just for that, I'm considering nuns. voting for Jedi Fallen Order. I don't. No, no, no. Yes. no I, I, I'm joking. Nuns in their panties. I'm, okay. <laughs> Again, I have played it. I'm voting for Devil May Cry 5. Oh. But I... Okay. I um, I'm gonna confirm that but, vote. You know, this is this is one of those. After I play, after I play Jedi Fallen Order, maybe my my mind will change, but it'd be too late for the year at least. Oh yeah, that might be me in control. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna confirm oh. that vote in three, two, one, go. All right. So now we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order against Disco Elysium. If no one has anything to say, the voting order shifts to Taylor. There's this character in Disco Elysium. His name is Gart. He's the proprietor of the hotel you stay at. And in the first day, you've already trashed his space, so he hates you. And Hang so on, whenever whoa, 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 whoa. There is a hotel proprietor named Garth? It's Garth, Garth or Garth. Hang on. Are you telling me that Garth's service is canon in Disco Elysium? <laughs> it's Garth, G-A-R-T-E. Yeah, it might as well be Garth. It's real close, it's though. Real it is, close. It's short for Lawrence Garth. But we, holy shit. We need more characters named Garth. But Garth so anyways, this character, he's not a huge part of the story, but he's my favorite character because... He's so he played pissed. in the improv for years. Well, okay, yes. yes. I mean, holy shit, Nick, you're blowing my mind here. <laughs> um, but he's, the difference is, Gart hates him. He's always in a bad mood because you fucked with his room, you broke his stuffed bird. So whenever you talk to him, he goes, yes, can I help you? And you're like, hey, Gart, there's something I want to ask you. And every time you do, he goes, another thing. Great. I love those. <laughs> And it's my favorite line in the game. The way he says it is so good. And it's like, it's not supposed to be as funny as it is, but it is. Disco Elysium. Yeah. Uh, Christian. Disco Elysium. Uh, Nick. Come back to me. Uh, okay. Uh, Clanky is next. Yeah. Graham. Uh, ooh, um, this is really tough. Um, at the end of the day, there are other games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. There isn't really another game like Disco Elysium. <laughs> hmm. Wow. And back to Nick. All right. In that case, I'm I'll, I'm going to vote for it. I'm going to vote for Jedi just because my vote doesn't matter. And, you know. All right. The final round. So, Once again, great top two. Mm -hmm. so, I, uh, I have not played either of these, but I will. Oh, well, yeah. Clanky hates actually. both of these. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know. Clanky, how do you feel about Disco Elysium? I can't really tell. The problem is, is that I don't. I don't feel about Disco Elysium. I don't really feel anything about Devil May Cry. I don't really feel anything about Sunless Skies. I mean, like, most of the games in this top have kind of been a more, I guess, like, a more strategically picked coin flip. This is my thing about 2019, right? Is I feel like it's very, like, the games that you are passionate about, not you, Clanky, but, like, you, the consumer, Anyone who is passionate about their own games in 2019 is very passionate, but if it's not one of the games you care about, it's like, you really don't care. Yeah, I guess that's the thing, is that, like, I just aggressively don't care about either of these games. I will say it's been a little bit refreshing for me, because I think out of everyone in the yearlies, I've kind of been, like, the luckiest person, because, like, I think for, like, the hmm. past, for, for every single yearly, a game that I care about has made it to the final round. And, like, all but in all but one case it's one so like it's refreshing to have two games that i've never fucking played like set up before me and i get then i get to help decide which one you know which one does the thing you know and it's also kind of yeah. do i i, I kind of need some more bad yearlies. <laughs> 
So I've had, I've been too lucky for too long. I feel that. Yeah, one of these you just need you you're gonna need a 2017 for me where you're just like I, I apparently uh, I apparently just don't play video games that came out this year. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am also very happy that Katana Zero made it as far as a tit. I'm still a little bit upset about that. Because of Death Stranding? Yes, of course, because of Death Stranding. I don't blame you. It's one of your top five favorite fucking video games. I don't blame you. I think the only thing I'm really I'm really hurt about is I feel like Bug Fables should have made it into the top four, <laughs> honestly. I think that uh, Mini um, Motorway should have made yes! it to the top four. Yes, agreed. It's Hashtag should have been Mini there. Motorways. <laughs> <laughs> if only, Jordan, if only you had chosen uh Oh Bartender as your uh, as your honorable mention. I didn't want That's... Christian to squirm, though. Thank you, Jordan. I he would only have squirmed for one round because Mini Motorways would have won. Yeah, the, like at the very least, the, the, the allowance of letting uh Oh Bartender into the bracket is knowing that it's not going to make it very far. I was, so. I was, I'm gonna be honest. I almost put uh oh, bartender as my number three. <laughs> Clanky, I would have, I would have, I would have fucking. Wait, but Clanky, you didn't you rank? Didn't you rank your honorable mentions in order of? Uh... Yes, and then I decided to be truly honest with myself, and that's yeah. why uh oh, bartender's at the bottom of the honorable mentions. Yeah, it's it, is it at the not bottom at the, of your honorable mentions? Not at the bottom. Not at the bottom. It's Should not be. at the bottom. No, but it's like further. Close. Yeah. But interesting. Now you think Tetris ninety nine is worse? Uh, I suck at Tetris, so yeah. Okay. That's not that's not a diss on your game. That's just I like Tetris a lot. Oh no, Tetris is a very well made game. I'm not saying like I, you, listen, you don't have to defend a uh, oh bartender. It's hey guys, don't make our five versus Disco Elysium. Who starts? Well, yeah, listen, right. guys. No matter what happens, a great 2D platformer is going to win. <laughs> and it's Devil May Cry 5. No matter no matter what happens, a D will win. Yes. I'm so glad that that's the bit. <laughs> this fucking shit. A good old pair of double Ds. Oh my. Saucy. Saucy Baka. No. It's saucy. By the way, Shut up. this is completely off topic. I just I just found out one of the, because um, they just released the new cast list for the new um, season of Survivor, and one of the tribes is literally named Baka. <laughs> and I kept please thinking tell me the, the other. Meme. Please tell me the other tribe is named Saucy. I, I don't think it is. S U S I sussy. This is gonna be the Baca tribe, and I'm gonna be like. <laughs> I don't think they're legally allowed to be named Team Sussy. Anyway, no. yeah, we we can vote. Anyway, Taylor. Well, I like to say a little bit more when it's the last round. Um, mm -hmm. I really like both of these games a lot. Um, <laughs> both of them kind of came from places that, like, I never really expected them to roll their way into my life. Uh, Disco Elysium, when I first saw it at the Game Awards for Best Narrative, I'm like, well, I do like a good story, but like, what the fuck is this? And then it was described to me as an RPG with no combat. It's just story. And that sounded really refreshing to me. And then I played 40 hours of it. I made all the choices. I had a great time with it. But I also played Devil May Cry 3. And Devil May Cry 3 was so good. And then I played Devil May Cry 5, and it was marginally better. So close. Sometimes I go back and forth, as I said at the beginning. But as I said before, one of these games is a story. One of these games is a story and gameplay. Um, and that's not – I'm not saying Disco Elysium has no gameplay. But I get way more adrenaline. I get way more of a rush. And there are other elements of Devil May Cry 5 that I look forward to talking about with this group of friends in another disclosed space um, is mm -hmm. Devil May Cry 5. Okay. Christian. Come back to me. Mick. I'm going to vote for Devil May Cry 5 only because I played it. it okay. went, after I played Disco Elysium, I might go the other way. But okay. too late for the year release. Uh, Clanky? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I've been no, what no. I've been voting for Disco Elysium and not Devil May Cry, so I guess I'll just keep doing that. Okay, Graham. Uh, Disco Elysium, like the, the, it make, there's so, there's one thing in particular about the world of Disco Elysium that when like it's not even like really a spoiler, but like I just want to find like out your reaction like when you see it. 
Okay. Uh, so I'll be waiting for you on the other side for when you when you finish yeah. that. I have Disco Elysium, just haven't had time to play it. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what Graham is talking about, and I'm curious too. Okay. Okay. So as you may both recall, Christian. I was split between these two games. I want to um, remind you, Christian, you did do this vote already. Yes, I did do this vote already. It was a very t- very tough vote. At the end of the day, I went with what my heart pointed to at that very moment. Oh, um, God, I'm going to give my votes. I'm going to give my vote, and then I'm going to give my reasoning. I and the winner of the 2019 year uh-huh. lease is Disco Elysium. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> Disco Elysium is a game that intrigues me in so many different ways from all the different stories that you all have been telling me to the fact that it has like apparently the most words out of any game like that is true i think made. like and i, have I actually, I actually think stats. some of the skies might be able to beat it in terms of no no i'm pretty but... sure it holds the world record i'm not positive and i just feel like disco elysium would give me a more substantial experience than devil may cry devil may cry hooked me in with its visuals and its finesse and its great boss fights. But then after I really thought about it for a little while, I realized I think Disco Elysium will give me the overall better experience. And that is the winner of the 2019 year lease. Okay. Put up some uh, some streamers and do the party <laughs> horn sound effect. Yeah, I mean, this is a, think, this is a pretty by the numbers 2019 when Disco Elysium wins all the awards. Uh. I wow. think this is the first time one of my picks have won the whole thing. Oh, congrats. Whoa. Congrats, yeah. Graham. Woo. Graham, you did it. I did it. I did it, Dad. I almost did it. I won. You put three houses twice. I'm gonna, Disco I'm, Elysium still yeah. won. I'm going to stop the recording. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't stop the recording. Okay. Has always stopped the recording. It's the end of the yearlies. It's the end of the 2019 bracket. We had some fun. We had some good times. But most importantly... Taylor, you know I'm just going to cut it off mid-sentence, right? No, you're not. Because I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Because anyone who takes the time to listen to us talk is a great person. And we're extremely grateful that you took the time to listen to us talk about games and yell at each other for three hours. You should probably Um, seek help. Except you, Richard. (laughs) Richard from Kansas. (laughs) My poor Squirtle. Thanks for watching. There's probably a couple of other videos uh, up in the thumbnails or whatever. Consider watching those. Have a great day, and see you soon. Thank you, viewer. Fuck off. <laughs> One. I know where y'all live, and I'm approaching. <laughs>